test.
Please be seated. Colleagues, uh, staff, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we have an absolute uh, pleasure tonight for the singing of our national anthem as I'm pleased to introduce to you Tommy Solo. Tommy is a London, Ontario based veteran of the 70s and 80s rock circuit. He met B.B. King circa 1980. I think I did too, actually, give or take, and uh, was described as an artist with a lot of heart and soul. Tommy's been nominated for numerous awards uh, for various London music uh, uh, specific awards and was awarded cover track of the year 2015 by the London Free Press for his cover of the classic Hooked on a Feeling, an honor which was repeated the following year for his cover of Come and Get Your Love. You would have seen Tommy perform at various local festivals and has shared the stage in recent years with ex-members of classic Canadian bands, Thunder Mug, Helix, April Wine. Most recently, Tommy has been busy producing Rockin' for Kids, a benefit show for the Children's Health Foundation of Southwestern Ontario. There's a new recording project in the works and Tommy Solo and the Night Crew will be featured in this coming summer on the main stage of the International, London International Rib Festival, Sunday, August 2nd. I said that date for uh, Mr. Hillier's benefit. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, please welcome uh, Tommy as we ask you to stand and join him in the singing of our national anthem. Ladies and gentlemen, Tommy Solo. I uh, said to Tommy that uh, Jimi Hendrix has nothing on him, let me tell you. It's, uh, that was uh, very well done. Um, and a first, I think, for us to have that kind of an instrumental. So uh, doubly delighted. So thank you again, Tommy. Uh, colleagues, the uh, City of London is committed to making every effort to provide alternate formats 
and communication supports for council standing or advisory committee meetings and information upon request. To make a request for any city service, please contact accessibility at london.ca or 519-661-2489, extension 2425. If we need to do this tonight, council will break for dinner at approximately 6.30 p.m. There is a rumor that that might well indeed be required. So I thought you should know, and we wanted uh, the gallery to be aware as well. I'll look for any disclosures of pecuniary interest. Councillor Turner. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Uh, with respect to the budget, uh, the items uh, with, pertaining to any funding to the Middlesex London Health Unit, uh, as well as to any funding or transfers disbursements to child reach uh, services, uh, first because I'm an employee of MLHU, and second because my wife's an employee of child reach. With respect to uh, the third report of the Community Protective Services, uh, number three, or 2.2, the implementation of community mental health and addiction strategy, again, uh, arising from my employment with Middlesex London Health Unit. Thanks very much. Uh, Councillor Pelosa. Thank you, Your Worship. Just declaring a conflict on business case number 15 being the subsidized transit program for youth as I purchase this uh, monthly. Thanks very much. Councillor Lehman. Uh, with respect to the budget, uh, any items regarding transfer of funds to the LDBA, as I, may, as I am a member, I believe it's indicated in the agenda. Councillor Ed Mirberg. Thank you, Mayor. Um, conflict with anything regarding child care, as my wife operates her own child care, as well as Fanshawe College, as I have two full-time students at Fanshawe. Thank you. Any other conflicts uh, to be declared? Uh, Deputy Mayor Helmer. Thank you. On uh, the budget, uh, the golf operating capital budgets, as my father is employed by the National Golf Course Owners Association and my, uh, the City of London is a member of that organization. And on uh, the report from Community and Protective Services Committee on short-term accommodation regulations, that's 8.1.14. Uh, I have rented my home on Airbnb in the past, and I might do so again in the future, so I have a very interest on that as well. Thank you. I always taking these things very seriously, but I'm not sure if that ever meant that you were a scratch golfer as a result, uh, Deputy Mayor. Uh, any other comments or concerns with respect to pecuniary interest? Uh, Councillor Salee? Apologies, just want to recuse on number 5.3 uh, as I work for the federal government. It's related to Citizenship and Immigration Canada. Sorry, that was their old school name. They changed it now. Thank you. So noted. Uh, any other uh, disclosures? Councillor Kayabaga. Uh, thank you, uh, Your Worship. I just wanted to also declare a conflict on the Airbnb matter, as I also run Airbnbs. So noted. Thank you. Any other comments, conflicts? I'd like to declare one uh, as it relates to the discussion around uh, 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 insurance related to uh, the uh, London firefighters as my son-in-law. Not my son, as was noted in, uh, in the earlier notes, but my son-in-law uh, is uh, a member of the London Professional Firefighters. Any other comments or questions? Thank you. I am not aware of uh, any recognitions or matters, uh, confidential matters, to be considered in public. I'll look for a motion to go into closed session. Councillor Van Hol, seconded by Councillor Hopkins. We call the vote. Closing the vote, and the motion carries 15 to 0. Colleagues, we will recess to committee room 3.
Please be seated. Colleagues, I'm turning your attention now to the minutes, and I'm looking for a motion to approve the minutes from the meeting held February 11, 2020, as it is put on the floor. And uh, Councillor Cuyabaga, seconded by, I'm sorry, Councillor Lehman. Thank you. Any discussion? Seeing none, I'll turn your attention to the screen as we vote. Councillor Squire. Closing the vote, and the motion carries 15 to 0. Thank you, colleagues. Under uh, communications and petitions, there are three uh, communications on the agenda. Two are related to item 16, 4.1 of the third report of the Community and Protective Services Committee. And the third is one related to 15, 2.13 of the third report of the Community and Protective Services Committee. So I'll look for a motion to receive the communications and have them referred uh, um, and considered with the item to which it's related. Councillor Van Meerbergen, seconded by Councillor Ploza. Comments or questions? Then I'll call the question. Turn your attention to the screen. Closing the vote, and the motion carries 15 to 0. Thank you, uh, colleagues. There are no motions to which notice is given, so I'm going to turn your attention to the reports. The third report of the Community and Protective Services Committee, Councillor Lewis. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, with respect to the third report of the Community and Protective Services Committee, I have had requests to pull item 13, 16, 17, and 20. Unless there are any other items colleagues want pulled, I will put the remainder on the floor, knowing that several colleagues do want to speak to uh, some of those items. So, Noting that, I'll first look if there are any other items colleagues have wished to have dealt with separately. Three. I see item 3, 2.2. Uh, that's a conflict with Councillor Turner. Council, uh, 14, again, we're talking conflicts, short-term no, accommodations, no. Councillor Cuyabaga. <coughs> and I have one uh, that's already been pulled. I think the others have been pulled. I think that's appropriate. Any other items colleagues wish to have uh, pulled or at least to acknowledge their pecuniary interest? Seeing none, there are a number of consent items on the floor, which is the balance. Any comments or questions? Councillor Hopkins. Yes, thank you, Your Worship. I would like to uh, just uh, make a comment on number 11 and 12, the vacant bylaw uh, buildings and property standards bylaws that are coming forward. I want to thank staff for bringing forward these reports. I know there will be a public participation meeting. I think that's why I want to speak to it, uh, letting the uh, public know that that's going to be coming forward. And again, uh, pleased to see them, these uh, reports. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Hopkins. Any other comments with respect to the consent items? Councillor Kyabog. Uh, thank you. Through you, Chair, I just had a question as um, I wasn't able to attend the committee meeting as uh, my son was sick. Um, I did want to know a little bit more on where we're sitting with the report for the heritage uh, vacant buildings. Through your, your staff. Worship, uh, through your worship. That'll, that'll be part of this, uh, the uh, reports that Councillor Hopkins were was referring to, so they'll be coming in uh, in tandem, the uh, uh, vacant building bylaw and the property standards amendments, and they will have um, proposed regulations for respecting um, heritage buildings. 
Councillor? Thank you. Um, through you, and will there be, uh, the, in the public participation portion of it, are we also going to be talking about the heritage vacant buildings as well? Uh, yes, through, uh, through your worship, yes, that will be part of the discussion as, uh, as part of the proposed amendments. Thank you very much. Any other comments or questions? Seeing none, I'll turn your attention to the screen as we vote. Closing the vote, the motion carries 15 to 0. Thank you, Councillor Lewis. Thank you, Your Worship. I'll now put item 3 on the floor. This is the implementation of the Community Mental Health and Addiction Strategy. Thanks very much. Comments or questions? Councillor Van Holst. Thank you very much. Since it's up, I'll, I'll make a comment on that. I was very pleased with uh, where this came. This was a bit controversial on whether we move forward with with this item or not. And uh, I, I think the, the people working on that did, did a great job of, of coming about as far as they can with that. It was very similar to the place we reached when coming up with the community drug and alcohol strategy and really getting all groups together to figure out how we can work on this and in sort of one, uh, in, in a union uh, is, is a great, it's a great step forward, so I think it'll be very helpful that this work has been done. Thanks very much. Any other comments? Seeing none, I'll turn your attention to the screen as we vote. Closing the vote, and the motion carries 14 with one recuse. Councilor Lewis. Thank you, Your Worship. I will now uh, put item 13. This is 2.10 from the committee agenda. The suppressing crime through business licensing regulations, theft of gasoline and scrap metal on the floor. Uh, earlier this afternoon, uh, the clerks circulated uh, an amendment to this, uh, which would refer the gasoline thefts back to staff. Uh, this referral came at the request of staff because information has changed since the Community and Protective Services Committee uh, met on this item and in fact uh, a private member's bill has now been tabled in the Ontario legislature with regard to this so this gives staff an opportunity to go back and review what, what may be coming from the provincial level before we proceed uh, through a long process here with reports PPMs and everything else when the uh, Ontario legislature may deal with this for us. I'll note that the clerk is handing out a copy of that uh, of this item as amended. Uh, do you have a seconder for this, uh, Councillor Lewis? Is there a seconder? Councillor Van Meerbergen, thank you. Comments or questions with respect to this? And uh, before we vote, I will give the ever industrious clerk the opportunity to, uh, to uh, share that with you, which I believe you should have seen in advance of this. So this was sent earlier, colleagues, uh, to your, for your benefit, but uh, any comments or questions? Deputy Mayor Helmer. I take it that the councillor is moving the amendment? Yes. Okay. That would be correct, yes. Yeah, so on, on the amendment, it would be helpful for me to know whether this private member's bill, which you know, is being introduced or will be introduced, if it's on both these matters or just one of the matters. Mr. Kotz, yes, do you want to respond to that? Uh, through his I, I haven't seen the uh, amendment, but my understanding is there's a private member's bill from um, uh, the chair of the Standing Committee on Regulations with and private bills, uh, Deepak Anand, and um, I believe it's uh, respecting the um, uh, the requirement for um, for the uh, uh, mandatory uh, pay. Deputy Mayor. 
Any other comments or questions uh, before I take it back to Councillor Lewis, please? Uh, thank you, Worship. Yes, I, I just wanted to be clear with colleagues that uh, the committee recommendations for the scrap metal, uh, that has not changed. That will, of course, move th forward through a draft bylaw, a public participation meeting, and public input. This is just the first step. Thanks very much. Uh, so as amended, I will turn your attention to the screen as we vote. Closing the vote and the motion carries 13 to 2. Councillor Lewis. Thank you, Your Worship. I will now put item 14. This was 2.13 from the committee's report uh, with regard to. Proposals. No, you're ahead of me. I thought you were going to go back to. Uh, and now we have to oh. vote on that as amended. So I presumed you were going to move that accordingly. I thought you might. Seconded by Councillor Van Hulst. Comments or questions? Sorry if there was confusion to that. Seeing none, I'll call the question. As amended. Closing the vote, and the motion carries 15 to 0. Deja vu all over again. Councillor Lewis. Thank you, Your Worship. And in the interest of trying to minimize my standing time, I will now put item 14 on the floor. That's the proposed regulations to short term accommodations. Comments, questions? Councillor Hopkins. Yes, thank you, Your Worship. And I want to thank the committee. Unfortunately, I wasn't unable to attend, but I um, understand uh, this was a consent item coming to committee. Committee uh, has uh, responded uh, saying that we are receiving the report. We'll be uh, undertaking a public participation meeting. And I have a question through you, Your Worship, to staff. We're also going to be directing civic administration to look at short-term accommodation um, uh, uh, under the municipal accommodation tax as well. And I'd like to know, is that going to be coming through with the uh, recommendation for short-term accommodations or will it be coming separate? So we'll be having a public participation uh, meeting just on short-term accommodations from what I understand with the report. So how will the um, municipal accommodation tax be reported back to us and where or is it we're just directing staff to work with Airbnb or what are we doing and how are we going to be receiving the report back? Mr. Kotsvist. Uh, through, uh, through his worship, so uh, I'll start and uh, maybe uh, Ms. Barbone might finish. <laughs> uh, but it, basically, if council approves the licensing uh, process for short-term uh, rentals, then finance can bring forward for the necessary bylaws and agreements to begin collecting municipal accommodation taxes. So that would, that would be a subsequent process. Councillor. And if I could just understand that a little bit. So uh, what, what we uh, agree with, when it comes to short-term accommodations, we will be also agreeing with short-term um, municipal tax accommodation going hand-in-hand -hand then with this recommendation? Or I, I guess my question is, I just want to understand um, when we will be, will it automatically, will we automatically be looking at municipal accommodation tax as we go through the licensing for short-term accommodations. Mr. Constance. Let's try Ms. Barwon instead. Thank you, Your Worship. So um, they will be two separate processes. This will initiate it. The collection and how we would proceed in actually doing the collection for the short-term accommodation will depend on whether the licensing model and how that goes through. And then based on that, we would develop an agreement and bring that forward to council for approval on moving forward on the methodology that we would do to collect and implement that. So they, this will set the stage and then depending on how this is implemented and how the licensing does may occur or may not, that will affect how we proceed 
proceed to do collection. So we will bring that forward under a separate cover, a separate agreement, update the bylaws accordingly, subject to the will of council. Councilor. Yeah, thank you, uh, Your Worship. I think that clarification is uh, very much appreciated. I'm very supportive of this moving forward, given the concerns uh, that I hear in my ward about the need for, especially when it comes to absent uh, ownership uh, of properties and the need to put units back into um, um, the municipality too. I think uh, there's a conversation that needs to be had. The public participation meeting I think is important. I know we had a public information center uh, sessions back in December where there was probably mainly people from the industry that attended and uh, I hope uh, we're able to uh, promote this um, public participation meeting. It, it, it's an opportunity for um, everyone to get together and have that conversation uh, and then as I understand that will staff will take that back and then uh, a recommendation will be coming forward so I'm looking forward to that thank you thank you any other comments or questions seeing none I'll turn your attention to the screen as we vote Closing the vote, and the motion carries 13 with two recuse. So noted, Councillor Lewis. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. I will now put item 16 on the floor. This was 4.1 in the committee's agenda. This is the cost recovery for fire services, uh, third party cost recovery. And uh, the committee's recommendation is that we ask staff to get some more information and bring back a report to us. Comments or questions? Councillor Turner. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Uh, I recognize the, uh, the request is to, to get a bit of information. Uh, as it's presented to us, I, I won't be supporting this. Uh, there's a couple of reasons. Uh, uh, I recognize the, um, uh, the initiative to try and find some cost recovery. I think that's important that we, uh, we look under every stone wherever possible. In this circumstance, uh, the, uh, if the cost was uh, uh, placed on insurance companies, the insurance companies respond in kind by an increase in premiums. Uh, the uh, potential recovery is about half to 1% of the total fire operating budget, uh, which would, uh, uh, on a per household basis, uh, potentially save about $3 per household, and about $1.50 to $3 per household. If, uh, if your premiums went up, uh, I'd imagine it's going to be significantly more than that, even if it's a, a 5 to $10. So the net amount to uh, homeowners uh, and, uh, and property owners within the city uh, could end up being more uh, than... Uh, than this and so I have uh, reservations about that um, I don't think there's a sufficient uh, sufficient uh, recovery that warrants going further at this point and I think the uh, the potential risks are much higher thank you Councillor Pelosi thank you your worship uh, this was my note to committee uh, we did have a discussion there just to uh, clarify some concerns that have been raised um, looking for report back this is a report that came through in 2016 looking for an update from staff as some things have changed in the industry. Other cities doing this are currently Hamilton, Kitchener, Sarnia. We have neighbors, uh, St. Thomas, Middlesex Center, wondering how they're doing with it. I know it might seem a low, a low cost coming back of 290,000 estimated to 485. That money would be used by the fire department for more education or perhaps equipment looking to see what, what's being done out there. As I said, simply a report back. I saw it prudent to, to follow up on this. And certainly, if the report comes back from staff and it's ill-advised, absolutely, at that time, we can decide not to do it. But looking forward to having that information ahead, uh, before us. Had also spoke with several mayors of these cities who have done it. They've raised no concerns um, from their residents. Also have heard the concern about potential increase in insurance premiums. In my preliminary research, haven't found that to be true as either. Uh, certainly recognizing there's two sides to every story and I would like staff to get some information and report back. Thank you, uh, Councillor Hopkins. 
Yeah, thank you, Your Worship. Um, I appreciate uh, the councillor's desire to save, save money uh, and, and, and find savings. I know uh, this, there was a report done in 2016 that, uh, uh, to look into this. I, I supported that we, we should move forward. I still feel that way, but uh, if we're just getting a report back, I'm, I'm willing, uh, I'm not sure what more information we're going to get. Uh, I, I guess I should be open to receiving a bit more information, but I am a little bit cautious. And one of the reasons I'm, I'm cautious is uh, the process that if this recommendation was to go forward, the process on our RFP and looking at other third-party distributors, uh, I, I'm not. I, I, I'm a little um, worried with the way this is worded that we're looking at. By, um, at Fire Marquee as being the third party, or I, 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 I'm just very cautious uh, what we're doing here and what we're asking in a report back. And if there's anything that should be uh, given to us, and uh, Your Worship, uh, and, and maybe I can uh, go through you to staff uh, to get a comment back on how that RFP process would look like. I think that information would be important. In the 2016 report, it was noted that there were a few other companies out there, but nothing more. So if we were going to seriously look at this update to a 2016 report, would in that report have information on the process to look at third, third party? So through your worship uh, to staff, if they could uh, just give a further comment. Um. Ms. West, would you, Ms. Smith, would you respond to that? Through your worship, that is correct. As part of our review, we would look if there are other, any other third-party providers that are currently providing the same or similar service. We would bring that back to you, and I'm assuming we would follow our procurement policy moving forward uh, based on the decision that Council makes at the time. Councilor Hopkins. Okay, I just wanted clarification on that. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? Seeing none, um, I'll turn your attention to the screen and call the question. Closing the vote and the motion is lost, five to nine, with one recuse. Thank you, uh, Councillor Lewis. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, I will now put item 17 on the floor. This was 4.2 uh, in the committee agenda. This is the uh, Conestoga Hut pilot, uh, the recommendation to ask staff to come back with a plan uh, that would tell us what a Conestoga Hut pilot project might look like for the city. Thank you. Comments or questions? Councillor Cassidy. Uh, through you, Your Worship, I wonder if uh, um, clerks could uh, comment on whether an amendment that I would propose to make would be contrary. And the amendment that I would make would be that staff consider uh, these Conestoga huts, but not necessarily report back with a separate report. That sounds like a take note type, but let's... Uh reflect back. Have you, has the clerk seen that in advance? We're conferring. The advice that I've received uh, from the clerk is that it is contrary to the, uh, to the uh, point uh, 17 on um, in terms of the direction that it was taken. Councillor Cassidy. So, so then I would urge my colleagues to defeat this uh, recommendation coming from committee. Uh, I, I've, over the weekend, uh, I watched the, uh, the committee meeting, um, especially with regards to this, uh, this proposal. And I did a little bit of research on these Conestoga huts. Where they are mostly used and where they, they, uh, they've had broad acceptance is in the Pacific Northwest of the U.S. And the climate there is vastly different from our climate. Uh, these are huts that have no indoor plumbing. They have no heat. They have no electricity. 
um, it's a little bit more than a tent. Um, and, and also they are generally used as a, as a, a version of a homeless shelter. So we have staff uh, working. We've, we've made a number of very drastic, I would say, um, changes in, in our approach towards housing and homelessness recently. And I think we really need to uh, concentrate on the direction that staff is taking right now and give staff our full support in that direction and concentrate our, our, our resources, which are not infinite, uh, to what staff is doing right now. We're seeing some really, I, I think, good short-term results, and I think we need to carry on there. Um, I think, to a large degree, we have to look at, at uh, what these huts um, represent and what they really are. And we shouldn't accept people living on the streets in London. We should be doing everything in our power to prevent that from happening where people don't want it. We have to also recognize the choice of an individual. But where they would rather not be camped out on the streets, we need to solve that problem and we, we need to find a long-term solution. And we shouldn't accept that people would be living in huts like this without access to water, electricity, sanitation. I think it is further stigmatizing homeless people. Um, if you look online, you see various uh, reports on what the cost of these huts are. Generally, they're in the $2,000 range. I think money would be better spent on constructing permanent affordable housing with supports. And what tends to happen when we set up encampments like this is that they tend to become permanent. Um, and we, again, we, I just keep going back to the point that it's not, it should not be acceptable that people would be living like this. We need to understand the feeling. We need to understand, I, I understand, sorry, the feeling that the urgency to do something when, when uh, there have been some very, very cold days this winter. We're lucky that it's been kind of a mixed bag. So right now, for example, the weather's kind of mild, but it has been, there have been some very cold nights and I understand that sense of urgency to get people sheltered in any way possible. But I really do believe that the direction staff is taking, the strides they have made in, in, in a very short time have deserve recognition. And we need to continue to focus there. We need to give staff that support and we need to continue to seek permanent solutions for this, and I really do not think that this is the way to go. And when we have limited resources, I think any dollar spent that's not spent on permanent solutions with supports is wasted money. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? Councillor Turner. Yeah, thank you, Your Worship. Uh, again, I appreciate the initiative of the councillor to bring this forward. I think it's important that we look at creative solutions uh, to our housing challenges. Uh, I, I don't believe this is the appropriate one, however, and uh, as Councillor Cassidy had identified, uh, one of the risks of creating uh, a, an initiative like this is that, uh, that it becomes seen as a, as a viable alternative to housing. Uh, and I, I, it might be a strange parallel, but uh, in my mind, I think to refugee camps, and I think about how long and how many people are in refugee camps globally. Uh, and there obviously is an incentive to try and move people to, uh, to permanent statehood and permanent housing and, and, uh, and, and permanent locations, but uh, refugee camps often end up being a, a long-term tertiary center uh, and intermediary. I, I see the same risk uh, established here if we were to identify spots uh, where uh, those who are homeless end up finding some form of shelter as a, at a very minimum it ends up being to some degree sanctioned by the city and then uh, it may take the foot off the gas a little bit on the initiatives that we're doing right now. The second is a really important issue that uh, Councillor Cassidy raised is the question of bandwidth. Uh, how much capacity exists within uh, housing and homeless prevention to be able to uh, look at, into this while at the same time uh, really ramping up 
hopefully of what we'll pass later on this evening uh, in terms of one of the largest initiatives in, uh, and uh, expenditures in uh, housing and homeless prevention that we've done in some time. And I think our focus needs to be there. Uh, I, uh, it, it's tough because I don't know if there's a right answer to this, but I do know what the opportunity costs are, and I do know what, what some of the risks are associated with this. So uh, for that, I won't be um, uh, supporting the motion. Thank you. Councillor Van Holst. Uh, thank you very much. I do hope you will uh, support the motion to come up with a plan, and then we'll be able to look at the plan and, and see how it is. We've, there has been success with these things. And I want to point out that um, I don't consider this a, a, an alternative to housing. I consider this an alternative to sleeping on the street in front of a business. And it's difficult to uh, get everybody into housing. I know I've been recently working with an individual that took two months to, to find a place in a hotel room uh, for them. And many thanks to staff for the great work they did uh, to, to make that happen. But people have, um, our, our homeless population has challenging uh, requirements. Uh, and uh, sometimes moving someone right into housing is, is just not possible. Uh, in other cases, uh, people have uh, severe mental health issues, and we don't know how they'll respond. So there's nobody here who can say how they'll respond to housing or something like this. And what I want us to do is look at an experiment to, to see how that, how that is. Because I spoke to a person uh, this week uh, who said uh, that they lived in one of these, and they they liked it. They 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 found it was something that the other homeless people didn't have, and for that reason, that reason they liked it, and and were there for uh, a number of months. And but that's perhaps all we need to get them to to get them and keep them in a place that's safer, and then from there move them on to the kinds of housing that we hope for. So I see this as simply transitional housing which is something we don't have. I don't think we can expect to take everybody from, uh, from a position on the street into uh, an apartment, which is ultimately what we would want. But I see that there's a place for this, and we can experiment with it very, uh, very inexpensively. So this is, these are very inexpensive compared to the other things that we're doing, so there's certainly room for this. And I think we should try because there's been success in other places and it may be successful here too. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? Uh, Deputy Mayor Helmer. Thank you. So uh, I guess my question is through the chair to uh, our staff. Um, if there were to be a report back about this pilot, do we know at this point what the scope that we're talking about is? Like, how much is it going to cost? How many huts are we talking about? What is the, how is it going to be paid for? Just some basic information at this point. Ms. Diggersbeer. Uh, through the chair, um, I believe that uh, the request was to look at um, a minimum of five units. So we'd be looking for, um, because we did indicate on a previous CAPS meeting that uh, when asked the question about the number of people who'd be interested in these units, we uh, offered that in our discussions with individuals in this community, it would be probably no more than five who'd be interested in it. Um, we're looking for space for these. We're looking for insurance. We're looking for uh, washroom facilities. Um, to be quite frank, um, I think at... Uh, I'm looking to Mr. Cooper to help me on this one. Um, I, I could see us having ongoing costs uh, somewhere around $100,000. Like, I think that's part of the reality by the time we get insurance and those kind of things in place. Um, am I off? You wanna, Mr. Cooper, I'll do you want to add to that? Add to that. Do you want to add to that, Mr. Cooper? Uh, sure. Thank you. Through through you, Mr. Worship. Um, <clears throat> I wouldn't. I would say that you're within range on that, Mr. Davis Beer. We're the, the work we've done in looking at what's going on in the Pacific Northwest is around. Um, the cost of security, the cost of supports, the cost of staffing those spaces. Those areas aren't operational without those costs or without those volunteers and that. So um, we are seeing the costs go up and up and up. It isn't just about um, 
the the construction of the huts. It's all the tertiary things that go along with that. And um, as we're seeing in, in what we're, uh, some of the work we're doing currently to, to in advance of uh, a report for, for April is we're seeing those costs just go up and up and up. Deputy Mayor? It was just a related question about how it would be paid for. Mr. Cooper, maybe. Again, we have that finite um, resource, that finite pie of money, and so there would be a recommendation to um, council or to committee based on what staff would recommend once we complete our research, but it would be looking within existing resources. Um, we wouldn't recognize coming with an additional ask. It would be taking dollars away from some of the things we're already doing to support something like this. Deputy Mayor? So I think it's a good idea to come forward with ideas and say, hey, I think this could work better. We should look at it. Uh, I think this is the appropriate way to do that. Bring it to committee, have a discussion, get a report back. Um, in terms of the opportunity cost just within housing, uh, I just want to put it in context because I do think there's a lot of things that need to be done on housing. And we certainly have people <clears throat> right now who are sleeping in worse accommodations than what we're talking about here. And, and so I think, you know, there's a whole spectrum of housing, uh, but there are people last summer who were sleeping in tents in parking lots uh, to three blocks from my house. Um, that's not as good as what's being proposed here. And so I think that this is why I think Councillor Turner was just talking about, he said, this is not obvious what the right answer is here because it's better than terrible, but it's not as good as excellent. You know, like there's a whole spectrum of housing um, and I think people are saying, where's the line below which I'm, I'm not going to pay for housing that's of that quality, right? I think that's, that's what is being discussed, that that's not a, um, the sort of a minimum standard that public money should be going into in terms of uh, housing. So uh, I'm not convinced that this is a great idea. The, these, the construction cost, from what I've been able to gather, is around 2,500 bucks. I think those are US dollars, so it's a bit higher. And I just want to just focus on that amount because the operating costs, I think, are harder to know for sure. Um, that's two families getting rent supplements for a full year. Uh, sorry, one family getting rent supplements for, for a full year because that's 200 bucks a month. So we have an existing program that does rent supplements to lower the cost of housing for people. Um, if we wanted to spend $2,500, we could put it into more rent supplements. Like that's just a very clear example of what could happen with the opportunity cost. And I think the kind of resources that need to go into looking at the pilot, coming back with a report, figuring out how it's going to be operated, who's going to operate it. This is not an insignificant task, right? And, and the scale is, seems to be small because it's like five of these huts. But the amount of work is fixed, whether there's five huts or 100 huts. You know, like it's the same amount of work that needs to be done to figure out how would it be done, all that stuff. So in terms of the priorities within housing, you know, we have a report just, just recently adopted about housing stability. This is nowhere in there. Right, so we've, got, we've done all this work to come up with these plans. This is what we're gonna do. We're gonna do this, we're gonna do that. These are the high priority things. We allocate resources to them in the budget. I think we really need to focus on those things. Um, so I'm very reluctant to kind of like look at some separate thing which is gonna take resources away from executing on these other things. I hear where the, the counselors are coming from. I think it's a difficult decision to make. Should we look at this small thing that could be really helpful for a certain group of people? Uh, or should we really focus on these things that we already have developed as ideas that could potentially have higher benefits long term and make sure we execute those things well. Um, so at this point, I'm not convinced that we should go along with this. If, if the report comes back and staff think it's a wonderful idea and we should go ahead, I mean, I'm open to being persuaded, but based on what I know now, I, I don't think it's the right direction to go in. Thanks very much, uh, Councillor Squire. I apologize, Councillor Lewis, to wrap up. Apologize, Councillor Squire. If Councillor Squire wanted to make comments, I... No. Well, the mayor doesn't want to I don't hear. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, so uh, I want to start by saying I appreciate all the comments that were made here. Uh, everybody made some really valuable uh, contributions to this discussion because this isn't an easy one for me either. But I, I am going to encourage folks to support the committee's recommendation to at least have staff bring back a, a report to us on what a pilot would look like. At committee, we did discuss uh, the importance of there being supports and access to, for example, sanitation, as Councillor Cassidy mentioned, and and uh, asked if, you know, for example, uh, through London Cares, could there be supports uh, on site if we picked a site? Would that be an option? 
maybe, maybe not, but they, the work has to be done before they can give us a definitive answer one way or the other. And Councillor Cassidy is right that in some ways, this is very much just an alternative to shelter, to going to uh, the men's mission or to any other of the homeless shelters, the Salvation Army. Uh, but we know that not everyone who is homeless in this city, for a variety of reasons, whether it's a trauma issue, whether it's a mental health issue, they will not present to a shelter. They will sleep in a doorway before they go in to stay in a shelter. Um, and this is certainly, to Deputy Mayor Helmer's point, uh, a finite pool of funds. And I know that our housing and homelessness prevention teams have done a great deal of work uh, in the last few months already and will continue to do that. Um, rent supplements can be a challenge too because we have a very, very low rental vacancy rate in this city. And when we look at where people can be accommodated, we have to look at a number of factors too, uh, whether that's access to transit, whether that's access to childcare and schools, whether that, whatever that might be, rent supplements uh, won't be the answer for everyone either. And I, I wanna share just in brief, a, a really quick story that was shared with me by the support officer over at the Royal Canadian Legion. Um, and Mr. Sluggett said to me, you know, we had a veteran that we tried to place in an apartment. We, we found a place for him. We got him in there. And for the first nine months he was there, he slept in a tent on his balcony because he was not ready to sleep in that apartment. And it took a lot of resources and support for them to get that fellow to the point where he could sleep indoors again. To Councillor Van Holt's point, this would be one of those transitional options for somebody in that kind of situation. It's not ideal. Uh, it is just really one step up from a tent. Councillor Cassidy is absolutely right about that. They can, however, be insulated. There are options. And one of the key factors that this gives people is a door that they can lock to secure their belongings. And it is a structure that's a little bit more sturdy than a tent, so uh, breaking in and removing those things is not going to be as easy for somebody. So this is not perfect. And I actually don't know whether I would even support the plan when it comes back from staff. But I do feel like it's worth at least asking them to come back with a, a plan that we could consider and say yes or no to. Uh, so that's, uh, I, I hope people will support uh, this recommendation. We have some amazing staff working in housing and homelessness prevention. And I think if they uh, come back to us with something uh, that works, great. And if they come back to us and say, you know what, these are all the challenges, this is probably not going to work, then I will be okay with that too. But I want them to have the chance to investigate this. Thanks very much, colleagues. I will now turn your attention to the screen as we vote. Closing the vote, the motion is lost, five to 10. Thank you, Councillor Lewis. Thank you, Worship. And that brings us to the final item. This is item 25.3 on the agreement. Uh, we pulled this as Councillor Sally has a con uh, conflict. Uh, this is the agreement for the London Middlesex Local Immigration Partnership with Immigration, Refugees and Citizenship Canada. Thank you, comments or questions? Seeing none, I'll turn your attention to the screen as we vote. In a moment. Closing the vote, the motion carries 14 with one recuse. Thank you, uh, Councillor Lewis. I'll now turn your attention to the fifth report of the Corporate Services Committee. Councillor Kayabaga. Uh, thank you, uh, Your Worship. I'd like to put the fifth report of the Corporate Service Committee um, on the floor. And I haven't heard from any of my colleagues if they wanted to pull anything. Um, so I'll move the full report. 
So noted. Uh, any items colleagues wish to have dealt, dealt with separately? Seeing none, comments or questions? Councillor Lewis. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Just really briefly, uh, the annual update on Budweiser Gardens I think was great news for the community, uh, and I just want to thank uh, both the municipal uh, staff, but as well as tourism and the staff at Global Spectrum who operate the facility. We've taken a great advantage of this incredible asset for our community, and I'm sure it will continue to pay dividends for us for many, many decades to come. So noted. Thank you very much. Any other comments or questions? Councillor Morgan. Um, thank you, Your Worship. I wanted to comment on the um, future tax policy uh, report. Um, and, and the reason why I wanted to comment is I, I've actually been talking a lot about this report uh, in the media, and I wanted to alert from my colleagues that this will be an important discussion that we'll have in April about setting our tax policy and tax ratios uh, for the next number of years. It's an important component of the way that uh, the budget and the budget increase is paid for across the different uh, tax classes, and also an important uh, discussion about the way that education uh, taxes uh, factor into this. Um, there's also a, an important matter that I'm hoping our staffing have more information for. I asked if the committee and Mr. Logan is endeavoring to uh, to get that, and that's related to uh, an item that impacts our uh, business community um, related to the education tax upload. Uh, it's a pretty important um, uh, amount of tax relief potentially for London businesses. Uh, it goes back all the way to council direction in 2005 who provides some consultation on the way that education taxes worked uh, in the province of Ontario. Um, stemming from that, um, the Liberal government, um, and I think the finance minister at the time was Dwight Duncan, uh, set forward a major tax reform that would actually start to upload the education taxes. Uh, and it was going to be about a $33.6 million of uh, tax relief for London businesses uh, with this program. Um, by 2012, uh, the, the government decided to pause the last two years of the implementation of the program uh, because the budget wasn't balanced and they were going to return to uh, uploading the remainder of the education taxes for businesses in 2017, 2018 when the budget was expected to be balanced. That never happened. Uh, despite that, this council has provided multiple directions to the mayor and our staff to write the finance minister, and there is a new government now, and we are engaging with them for the first time on this issue. Uh, there's no response yet, but I, I'm hopeful that by the time we actually deal with our, our tax policy, it would be nice to know the province's intentions on uh, what is an important component of tax relief for our business community. As colleagues will see when we get into the tax ratio discussion, the, the appreciation pressure of property appreciation is really in the commercial class. It is appreciating at a much faster rate than the other classes, which puts uh, a higher than average uh, pressure on that tax class. But there's only so much we can do to alleviate that. Uh, our council over the last uh, term lowered the tax ratio in the commercial rate from, I think, about 1.98 to 1.92, and potentially, again, uh, to 1.90 if we follow this, the possible direction in the report. Uh, that's something we can do, but there's only so much we can do overall because if a pro one property class is appreciating at a rate that's much faster than the others, it's really hard to bring down that, that, that tax burden. So the education tax rate and this provincial decision is potentially a, a very important decision the province could make to provide some, um, some tax relief to London businesses. And uh, I'm looking forward to hopefully have that information before us, but did want to alert to colleagues that this report is really important and the discussion we'll have in April is really important to what Londoners will pay on their, on their tax bills. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? Councillor Squire. Um, I also appreciated this report, all, probably from a different point of view of, of Councillor Morgan. You know, I think it's really important to keep in mind and, and to put it in its simplest form. If, if some people are getting, paying less of a tax rate than what we approved, which was an average of 3.9, you can be absolutely sure that other people are going to be paying higher. And, you know, having gone back to the past and into the future, what we're looking at, some of our uh, uh, people other than single family residential are paying more significant tax increases than, than even what we voted on. And I find that something that we should all be aware of um, as we move forward, because um, one way or another, those taxes are going to be paid. And as we apportion them between different classes, we really should be thinking carefully about what we're trying to do. Are we trying to encourage mm -hmm. single family? Are we trying to uh, encourage new multi-residential? Are we going to support our business community? And I think that's, I agree entirely with Councillor Morgan. But what I do have difficulty with is if we just make simple statements such as, well, 
you know, the tax rate is set here, but this class is lower, so everybody should be happy. I, I think it's much more complicated than that. And I think it's, it's really important, and I agree in that respect. But I also think looking at it simplistically and politically um, is not always the right way to go. Thank you, Councilor Plosa. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, my question's uh, going to be through you to staff in regards to item 7, uh, 2.3, in, in regards to the uh, Ontario Works Royal Bank of Canada uh, reloadable payment card options. Recognizing it's, it's quite... Uh, detailed agreement um a question to staff in regards to the inactivity fee that could be charged after 12 months of consecu consecutive um lack of use it's 250 per month wondering how that relates into they have the categories of active card suspended card closed card at which point if if a card's been inactive that they would just keep drawing all the money out versus us realizing that a, a person might not have access to their card and managing to stop something before the money is all gone and the banks just take it in fees. I think that'd be Ms. Dater Spear. And through the chair, um, the intention of this is to provide one avenue for tenant or for residents, uh, OW recipients to have access to funds. We're obviously still, this is a second measure as opposed to our first measure, which is to get them on a direct pop de deposit into their bank account. We would be working with them, their caseworker would work on them to make sure that they are continuing to use their card if they have a card. If they lose their card, they'd want to be telling us that they'd be losing their card and maybe be working with them on a monthly basis to make sure as best as possible uh, that they're not losing the money from their account. So it's a, a matter of uh, communication between the client and uh, the caseworker. Councillor. Thank you, Worship. Just a, a quick follow-up on that. Um, Recognizing that their bank account reloadable card is also private information, is there any way that we would know that they have failed to access those funds that are available to them? Ms. Dater Spear. Uh, through the chair, the relationship is between the, the uh, individual and the bank. That's their information. So we would obviously um, be sure to maintain that private confidentiality. Councillor, thank you very much. Any other comments or questions? Seeing none, I'll turn your attention to the screen as we vote. Closing the vote and the motion carries 15 to 0. Colleagues, I'm just going to uh, just see how far we get in civic works. I don't mind as if, if any of this is uh, pulled apart to be dealt with. I'm sensitive to the time, but I'm also mindful we want to work through this. So if I could turn your attention to uh, Councillor Lehman and the third report of the Civic Works Committee, please. And thank you, Councillor Kabaga. Uh, thank you, Worship. Um, be putting the third report of the Civic Works Committee on the floor. Uh, items 6 and 7, 4.1 and 4.2, uh, we'll, we'll pull those, uh, but I've had no communication uh, except for those two. Any other items colleagues wish have uh, dealt with separately? Deputy Mayor Homer. Uh, 4.3, the uh, sidewalks. Thank you, 4.3. That's 8 in the broad agenda, 4.3. Other items? All right, so then, uh, Councillor, I'll turn that back to you. You're looking to move the consent agenda no, items? Like, yes, yeah, so I would like to move the uh, remaining consent agenda items. Comments or questions? Seeing none, I'll turn your attention to the screen as we vote. Closing the vote, the motion carries 15 to 0. Councillor Lehman. Uh, thank you. I would now like to put uh, item number 6, 4.1, user pay uh, Christmas tree pickup on the floor. This is an uh, uh, idea that came from Councillor Van Holst to explore uh, another option to uh, have our Christmas trees uh, picked up, but not on the city's dime, but on a user pay 
uh, idea. So we were looking to have staff uh, report back on that option. Any comments or questions with respect to what is on the floor? Then I will turn your attention. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Oh, excuse me, Councilman Holst. I didn't see you standing there. I apologize. Yes, thank you very much. So, um, I believe this did not pass at the. Can we have some clarification just on? Uh, so this is the motion we're voting on. You're so. asking what is exactly on the floor, clerk. I'll turn that over to you, please. As you'll note from this, the, the motion failed, two to three. Um, so what does that mean in terms of the uh, of what we're voting on? Chair, why don't you respond? That's fine. Thanks. Yeah, so we are just uh, voting to uh, uh, receive it, essentially, that no action be taken uh, was the uh, um, motion uh, that... Uh, I'm sorry, we're looking at here, we're there, we're here, yeah, 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 yeah. so that, we're just, yeah, we're just receiving that communication, because we did, the motion failed. So is that clear, Councillor? Okay, thank you, that's, that's good, I'm, I'm, as I looked there, it seemed that it had passed, I'm, I'm of course, going to vote against the, the committee's recommendation to, uh, and uh, encourage you to do the same for uh, a few points that I'll make, so, uh, Your Worship, we had uh, we had voted in the budget uh, not to do the to save money. We voted to save money by not picking up trees for free in January. Uh, however, the the plan instead was to pick them up for free in in March or April. So I, I don't see that we really saved much money there. And of course, if uh, uh, if that's the case. <clears throat> the only way we would save them money if people took the trees uh, to depots themselves. And I would point out just from a terms of efficiency that for us to have one city truck drive through a neighborhood and then to the drop-off depot and not, not back again is probably better than having a hundred uh, cars drop off trees and then drive back to the neighborhood and through the neighborhood. So there's some efficiency there. The next thing I'd point out was the price. There was a question about price on, on this item and what, what the price would be. Well, we're saving $40,000, and we know we're picking up ten to 20,000 trees. So that's, that's a cost of 2 to $4 uh, uh, a tree. And if we set a price of $5, very likely we'll, uh, we'll recoup uh, most of that, if there were 8,000 trees, then we were to recoup the, the whole $40,000. Uh, and I'd also point out if, if we didn't, uh, didn't pick up that many trees, we would still uh, recover more funds than we would if we just picked them all up for free during the, during the spring pickup. So I know that $40,000 isn't a lot. Uh, however... Uh, I think this moves us in the right direction when we're looking at a, a tax bill that's that's going up by a large amount. And, uh, and I would also say that uh, by doing this little experiment, um, we might be able to use it in, uh, in similar ways in, in other areas. So I think it's worth doing. So although the uh, committee uh, voted uh, against doing this, um, so that was the motion. Okay, so then what I'd like to do is just put my uh, original motion on the floor as a, as a part B then. I'll just confirm that uh, that might be contrary to the okay. motion, but the, the motion on the floor actually, frankly, is to receive uh, the report. So the wording isn't exactly correct because it was defeated at... Uh, at committee, uh, the resolve of this was to receive. So let me just confirm with the clerk and just clarify for you, Council. Okay. So 
I'm advised that because the motion failed a committee, uh, you're able to put a motion on the floor, an amendment on the floor, as you uh, as you wish, uh, Councilor Van Holst. Subject to a seconder, bear with me. Okay, to put this in the right order, I need a seconder from Councillor Lehman's report to receive. Is there a second? And then I'll come back. All right, so we've got Councillor Van Merberg, and now we're going to come back to Councillor Van Holst, who's making a motion because the motion count uh, failed at committee. He has the ability to put forward uh, uh, an amendment to the uh, on the floor. Sure, Councillor Turner. My apologies, Your Worship. Um, the uh, the motion that's uh, being tabled here should not reflect the um, the minutes from the committee, and the minutes from the committee. That motion that was passed was that no action be taken regarding the proposed recommendation from Councillor Van Holst, uh, dated February 9th, as appended to the agenda with respect. Oh. My apologies. I just made things worse. Yeah, you're just. <laughs> <laughs> There's a, there's a country song about one motion away, but I don't know. It's, uh, all right, we'll get there. So we've got, uh, we've got a motion on the floor by, can you clarify what you'd like that, uh, that amendment to look like, uh, Councillor Van Holst? Uh, apparently that's appropriate. Uh, happy to do so if we go back to the original, uh, original communication. It simply says that staff investigate the possibility of collecting Christmas trees in January on a user pay basis. Thank you. Do you have a seconder for that? Second by Councilor Van Meerbergen. Any other comments or discussion? Councilor Cassidy. So this is the amended mode or the new motion by Councilor Van Holst. Um, so we heard from staff at, uh, at the Civic Works Committee meeting um, and what we were told was that this doesn't seem to be the, 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 the right direction to take. Um, so there are a limited number of Christmas trees that get picked up every year. Uh, through this system, we would have to set up an elaborate administrative process uh, where people actually register their trees or, and so that the truck knows where to go to pick these trees up. The other alternative is just that the trucks um, go through the streets looking for Christmas trees. So people think that report, getting staff to prepare reports is a simple, easy matter, and it's not a big deal, and it's, and it's their job. And, that, and that's what they do every day, just writing reports. But I would say that every time we task staff to create a new report, we are taking something else away. So staff are working on a number of things for this council and for the city. And every time we create a new report, we, we are limiting their ability to do all of the other things that are on their plate. We know from what staff reported at the committee that there is a yard waste pickup in March. Uh, for some houses, it takes until April for that first uh, yard waste pickup to happen. You can leave your tree at the curb uh, for that yard waste pickup in its entirety. You don't have to cut it up. You don't have to do anything with it. The truck will come to pick up the yard waste and it will pick up your tree and throw it in the, in the back of this truck. So that seems like the most efficient way to deal with Christmas trees. Uh, we talked about multi-residential units. Uh, it's the understanding of staff that most, if not all multi-residential units have a prohibition against live trees at Christmas time. So people dwelling in uh, high rises tend to have uh, artificial trees. So, uh, so that is not an issue here. I, I urge this council to defeat this motion. This is not a necessary report. Staff were very thorough in their responses to us. We don't need to add uh, another report as part of their workload and we can just defeat this and please move on. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? Councillor Van Meerberg. Thank you, Mayor. I think this um, motion by Councillor Van Holst actually makes a lot of sense. Frankly, um, I would have preferred to see it um, on the main property tax. It was costing all of 14 cents uh, to go with this, uh, with this pickup. I can see what's going to happen. 
uh, the, the service won't be available and we'll see hundreds if not thousands of Christmas trees, dying dead Christmas trees blowing around the streets of London in the gales of January. And, and, and for what? I mean, I think if we can look at this, simply direct staff to, to uh, come back with a report on a user pay basis, I think there'll be many people that would be willing um, to, to pay a few dollars to have it disposed of properly uh, and we do it in a proper manner. There are just simply a lot of homeowners in London that simply don't want to or, or don't have the ability to store a tree for three months. And so, and, and, and they don't have perhaps the ability to take it to a depot or someplace to dispose of it. I think we also have to remind ourselves that this would be recycled. So anything picked up would be taken to be uh, made into mulch. And I think it's win-win on many levels. We already have uh, an infrastructure in place to buy extra bags, uh, bag tags, et cetera. So, I mean, I think send it back to staff. Let's see what they come back with. And it may be win-win on many levels. Thanks very much. Any other comments on the amendment? Councillor Lehman. So you're going to do a wrap on this? Uh, well, actually, well, that would be Councillor well, Van Holst, yeah, no, I'm, I'm just uh, duly gonna, noted. <laughs> I'm just going to speak to this because I, I voted in favor of this. You know, we've had uh, Christmas tree pickups in uh, mall parking lots. Then we had it, and everyone's going to get picked up in front of our houses. Now we're looking at um, uh, uh, picking up in front of our houses, but putting the tree in our backyards for uh, the winter. Um, not every not every homeowner has that luxury of space to do that. You know, I think uh, when uh, it's worth exploring uh, a user pay option, um, if some, uh, I don't think it's a waste of staff time to do that. Uh, I'd be curious to see if it's feasible. Uh, I think a lot of people might uh, uh, take us up on that option. I don't want the taxpayer to pay for it, but uh, if someone wants us to come by and we can do that in an economic way, we're uh, the fees collected pay for the entire cost, and I'm willing to, to take a look at that. So that's why I supported that. If colleagues are comfortable, we'll ask Councillor Van Holst to do a wrap on this. Thank you very much. So it's $40,000 on the table. Uh, if we don't um, try to collect that from our residents, then we're going to have to pay that anyway. So we really... If we pick the trees up for free in March or April, we really haven't saved any of the money that we hope to save uh, by picking them up in, uh, in January. So uh, I see this as a, as a way of recovering some of that. And I think that more ways uh, to do services with user fees uh, is, is important in a time like now where uh, our, our property taxes are becoming unsustainable for some residences, right? So again, people write me and they say, uh, I only got a tiny 1% increase. How can I handle the, the increases in taxes? They tell me at the end of the month, I don't have money left for food. If you raise the taxes, I go hungry longer. Uh, this is a way to, to cut the taxes. So uh, I think it's, it's, it's worth trying. And if, and if this works, we might be able to use it in some other places too. So I do think there's going to demand. Either way, uh, in January uh, coming uh, of 2021, we're going to find out if there's a demand. Right? We'll see what happens uh, with, uh, with what we've suggested, and we'll find out if the prophecies of, of trees blowing around is true, but maybe likely. Uh, thank you. Please thank, support it. Thank you. I'm going to actually recognize uh, Deputy Mayor Helmer simply because we, uh, in terms of speaking to this uh, as a whole, because we have this and we have the balance of the motion. So as you wish, uh, Deputy Mayor, please go ahead. Yeah, I'm just rising because uh, what Councillor Van Holst said is not accurate. And so I'm going to point out that. Um, so we've already made a decision. We'll see what happens in the budget to stop the collection in January. The reason we're saving money is because we're not having a collection in January. So, I mean, there will be a savings to property taxpayers if we do not have a collection in January. The collection in March already happens. And what will happen in March now is instead of just collecting grass and stuff, we'll also pay up Christmas trees. So it's less work, which is why it's less money, 
and that's why there's a savings. Um, if there's some middle ground where half the trees get picked up on a user fee model, I actually think that's the least efficient of all the options. Right? You still have to drive around the city and pick up all the trees, but now there's half as many because some people kept them till March because they don't want to pay. <laughs> so I think either pick them all up, put it on the property tax, or pick up none of them in January and pick them all up in March. Thanks very much, colleagues. There's an amendment uh, on the floor moved by Councillor Van Hol, seconded by Councillor Van Meerbergen. If you are, you've, you've spoken to this. Uh, you, you know, well, perhaps I'll call a, po call a point of privilege then because I was told that I was presenting information that was inaccurate. And I don't, I don't believe that's the case. Is that um, a tree is a physical object and there can only fit so many in a truck. If we're picking up 10,000 trees, it doesn't matter when we do it, the cost of moving a tree from a house to a depot is the same. And so uh, just because we pick them up in, at a different time of year doesn't mean that the, uh, the, the fuel and the person driving the truck and the availability of the truck is, is different. So I, uh, I contest that my statement was inaccurate, but uh, I leave it to my council members to uh, vote on this now. And vote they will, so I'll turn your attention to the screen as we do. Closing the vote and the motion is lost for 211. Thank you, colleagues. On the floor now is the main motion um, moved by Councillor Lehman, seconded by Councillor Van Meerberg, and I believe, and that is to, you know, actually it's, it's true. Uh, so noting that, uh, and that is to receive the report, uh, I'll turn your attention to the screen as we vote. Closing the vote, the motion carries 15 to 0. Colleagues, I'd like to see Councillor Lehman stand here while we all go to, to dinner, but I think we, because I think we should. Uh, it's a little bit past 6.30, not that he should stand, but I'd like to return us back at about 7.30, as close to as we can. I'll look for a motion to recess. Councillor Cuyabaga, seconded by Councillor Cassidy this time. Let's do a hand vote on that. All those in favor? All right, we'll see you all back at 7.30. Thanks very much.
Please be seated. Councillor Lehman, are you still standing? I'm still standing. Thank you for bringing back dinner for me. Uh, at, least we, <laughs> at least we can do. <laughs> Why don't you do your best? Away you go. So uh, we're going to move on to putting 4.2 number 7 on the floor. Uh, this uh, um, was a motion that no action be taken on the proposed recommendation from Councillor Van Holst. Um, so I'm just going to put that on the floor. Comments or questions? I see none. We call the question. Closing the vote, the motion carries 12 to 2. Councillor Lehman. I'll put the final item, uh, number 8, 4.3, the removal of trees on Runny Mead Crescent on the floor. Councillor Counsel Helmer requests that be pulled. Thank you very much. Uh, comments uh, or questions? Deputy Mayor Helmer. Um, for those colleagues who've had to go through a discussion about sidewalks, uh, with me before I'm going to save you the concern I'm not going to repeat all of the arguments that I have made in the past about why having sidewalks on streets is important uh, I'm, I'm just going to say in our corporate asset management plan um, under the accessibility customer value <coughs> it says we should have sidewalks on all the street network and our policies in the London plan say sidewalks on both sides of the street in situations where that's not going to work because we're, we're putting sidewalks into a neighborhood where there's already constraints, one side of the street. So the compromise is one side of the street. That is what's being proposed here. Uh, I realize it's going to impact a whole bunch of trees. The solution here is to put in a sidewalk and plant some new trees. Councillor Square. Very pleased to talk about this particular matter. And uh, policy is not law. Um, policy is not something that you follow in every single circumstance. I would not have supported the community on this if this street was a route to any schools, uh, any public facilities, and it is not. It is an enclosed crescent with a very mature canopy of trees. In terms of the, the community, the entire community was supportive of the trees on the street. And I'm very proud that at the meetings I went to with them, and at the public meeting which I attended, the discussion was about trees. The discussion was about climate change. The discussion was about the quality of life in the neighborhood. The proposal with one sidewalk would have removed 39 mature trees from a street that is only used effectively by the people who live on the street. Under the amended uh, uh, presentation, without the sidewalk, there would be only 18 trees removed. We're saving 21 mature trees. This was not a discussion um, that is, was in any way negative. Uh, Runnymede is a unique street. All of the access streets that surround Runnymede have sidewalks. If someone wants to go to school, if someone wants to go to the secondary school, if one, someone wants to go to Medway Arena, anywhere they will be on sidewalks. For this circular street, with mature trees and a canopy, yes, they do not. Uh, they do want to preserve their trees. Um, I'm fully in support of what they're doing. Um, I appreciate there's a policy in place. There are cases where you don't follow the policy and make an exception, and that's what was done here. This was a four to nothing committee vote. I'm very proud of the presentation that was made, and that it was not in any way about uh, anything selfish. It was about the things that preserve and, and make a community special. So I'm asking you to support the committee recommendation. 
Thank you, Councillor Turner. No, thank you, Your Worship. Um, I'll try not to prolong my points either. Uh, uh, last term, I was on uh, the side of op opposing sides on two different votes. <clears throat> in, uh, in one circumstance, uh, there was a request for sidewalks. Uh, there was pretty much universal opposition among, on that block to the sidewalk. Uh, I voted in favor of placing the sidewalk. I thought it was really important. Uh, especially as uh, Councillor Squire had indicated, it was a connector route between schools, churches uh, in the community, be able to get to transit. Uh, there's some pretty key functions to that street. And the other circumstance, uh, it was uh, <clears throat> a street that, that didn't lead to uh, those connections in the same way. Uh, it still had some connection though, but the loss of the, the entire uh, treescape on the uh, western side of that street would have uh, significantly impacted the aesthetic uh, the, um, and the, the neighborhood quality. Uh, so in this circumstance, uh, I, I'll support the recommendation that's on the floor, but I think why I rise to speak about it is uh, the policy I think is very important. I think the objectives and the goals uh, uh, of this policy are the right ones. Uh, I think it, it remains the prerogative of council to uh, take a look on a case-by-case -case basis where there are circumstances that might be reasonable to, to revisit in those circumstances. And as the motion states, notwithstanding the requirements set out in the London plan, uh, that's an important uh, uh, component to this. Uh, so uh, for those reasons, I, I think it's appropriate. This, uh, this is a crescent uh, that is not a connector between neighborhoods and a connector between uh, other objectives. Uh, and uh, I think in this circumstance, the, the motion's appropriate. Any other comments or questions? Seeing none, I'll turn your attention to the screen as we vote. Closing the vote, the motion carries 13 to 2. Thank you. Thanks, uh, Councillor Lehman. Thank you. That I appreciate all you actions. standing all through dinner as well. I just want you to know that. Thank you. Colleagues, we have the fifth report of the Planning Environment Committee. Uh, Councillor Cassidy, if you would, please. Your Worship, I will put the entire report on the floor. I have not heard from anybody. We had a quick and efficient meeting, just over one hour. Speaks well of the chair, if I might add. Uh, Anyone wish anything dealt with separately? See none. Any comments or questions? Ah, Councilor Morgan. Yes, I'm going to make a brief comment on um, uh, the item in Hyde Park uh, Road. It's um, a development at the corner of Hyde Park and Gainsborough. Um, for those of you who've been in the area, it's where all the school buses are. Um, the developer owns not only that piece of land, but the land to the north, and then the land to the north of that, and the land to the north of that. And uh, this is the first phase of a number of developments that will likely come forward to planning committee. Obviously, each will be judged independently. But if they all line up in the way that this development has been approved by planning committee, there will be a, a really neat new experience in Hyde Park that really lines up with the, the community plan in that area, as well as the desire to create um, some more activity on the streetscape. They're very wide boulevards. Um, this particular plan incorporates uh, a way that um, uh, that boulevard can be used uh, for pedestrian uses. We have an active BIA in the area that's going to be very supportive of uh, utilizing this space in an interactive way as well, uh, that as well as the new park. Um, so uh, I'm very supportive of this, and I just wanted to recognize that, that this application has come forward through uh, a lot of consultation with the community, consultation with the business community, and a lot of consultation um, with our staff on finding a development that, uh, that meets our, our, uh, our parameters as a city, as well as the needs of the developer to do something that's economically viable. So, so congratulations to all of them, and I hope you all support it. Thank you, Councillor Deputy Mayor Helmer. I just wanted to speak to the, uh, <clears throat> the deferral of the loan repayments uh, in the community improvement areas. Uh, this is something we tacked on back in October as part of the core area action plan. I'm glad to see it coming forward. As it's noted in the report, just this one change is going to benefit on the order of probably 13 uh, property owners in the community improvement areas who are impacted by construction uh, that's imminent. Uh, I know it's gone over pretty well with the uh, business community, uh, certainly in my area where there's going to be major construction projects. 
uh, that we're doing this is just really giving them an opportunity to put off the repayments for a little bit. Uh, helps with cash flow. I think it's a good change. I'm glad to see committee supported. Any other comments uh, or questions? <clears throat> Seeing none, I will uh, turn your attention to the screen as we vote. Closing the vote, the motion carries 15 to 0. Thank you, Councillor Cassidy. Uh, colleagues, the fourth report of the Strate Strategic Priorities and Policy Committee. Uh, for this particular uh, committee report, I will turn to Councillor Morgan. Colleagues, I intend to change the order a little bit, so if you don't mind, uh, I'd like to uh, to look for your support, uh, and I'll, I'll look for a motion to receive first uh, the seventh report of SPPC, followed then by the report, fourth report, I was going to say the one we were just about to do, of SPPC, and then uh, followed by the sixth report. Uh, can I look for a motion for that, please? Uh, Councillor Morgan, seconded by Councillor Van Holst. Are we good with that order, Clerk? I find myself after a you want six yeah. And seven. I find myself after a full little belly that uh, that I would like to uh, replace the order slightly. So it will be eight point seven, eight point. Uh, which is the seventh report followed by the sixth report, sixth, seventh, and then fourth. Shall we do it that way? Same mover, same seconder. Councillor Van Holster, you good with my confusion there? I'm happy for the change. Thank you. All right, acknowledging that, if, the, if I haven't added enough confusion to that, I'll turn your attention to the screen as we vote. I think I'm putting the sixth, or four, or sixth report on the floor. Um, one, one, once we vote, yep. I've, I've confused the order, uh, Deputy Mayor, so you're, once you're we You're voting on the order. Okay. We're okay. voting on the order, yes. Thank you. Then you're on. And then deemed worthy, we'll vote on your report after that. Councillor Van Meerbergen. <laughs> Closing the vote, the motion carries 14 to 1. Interesting. Uh, yeah. Colleagues, uh, thank you for that uh, the clarification. I'll now look to the sixth report of the SPPC. Deputy Mayor Helmer, please, if you would. Uh, thank you. I'll put the sixth report on the floor. Uh, this was the off-site meeting. You'll see there is one item which we went in confidential session to discuss. Thank you. Uh, comments, questions? 
Then I'll turn your attention to the screen as we vote. Councillor Morgan, Councillor Maiman. Closing the vote, the motion carries 15 to 0. Thank you. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Uh, and now uh, for the SPPC report from uh, Councillor Morgan with respect to the budget. Uh, you've got uh, two reports to deal with. So yes, so the first this. report, um, the seventh meeting of the uh, Strategic Priorities and Policy Committee meeting is um, the report uh, related to the public participation meeting. So I'll put that entire report on the floor. Thank you. Any comments or questions with respect to the seventh report? Seeing none, I'll call the question. Closing the vote, the motion carries 15 to 0. Councilor Morgan. Okay, the, uh, the next... Uh, uh, SPPC meeting is um, the multi-day budget meeting, um, including all of the items. It's the very large SPPC report that you have. Um, there's a number of conflicts that have been called on the budget, so we have all of those separated out. Uh, what I would like to do is, is put all of those on the floor first, uh, and then I'll try to put everything else on the floor, and we'll see what happens with that. Um, but I'd like to deal with all of the uh, all of the conflicts first, just so we can work our way through those. Uh, we have them all separated out, and so uh, I will indicate the letters and then the type of service area. That might be help or, uh, helpful for people who have the conflicts to identify them, um, but the, I'm going to try to do this in a meticulous way. So the first would be in the Parks and Recreation Budget, item 4.4. 4.41B is related to children's services. So I, I'm going to suggest this, if, if we can, if there are any conflicts or issues to deal with of that regard that individuals would like to deal with separately, I just don't want to miss those in the event of, or do you want those declared after the fact, Councillor, if well, they're missed? Colleagues have declared their conflicts at the start of the meeting, um, so I've separated it based on the conflicts that were declared through the budget process. So. Uh, so it's already been separated out that way. After we proceeded through all of those, everything that will be left will be the remainder. Fair enough. So it's uh, it's clear what we're voting on then with respect to this Parks and Recs, Recs portion. Any comments or questions? Seeing none, I'll call the question. Mm -hmm. Van Holst. Closing the vote, the motion carries 11 to 2 with two recuse. Yes. Council. Thank you. And so, if for colleagues, I'm working off of page 9 in the report right now. So, I'll put 4.4 uh, AIC, which is golf uh, within the Neighborhood and Recreation Services area on the floor. Comments or questions? Then I'll turn your attention to the screen as we vote.
Councilor Sklar? Closing the vote, the motion carries 13 to 1 with one recuse. Okay, next is 4.41C2, uh, which is uh, Neighborhood and uh, Recreation Services recommended, the recommended provincial impacts. Sorry, uh, four point, that's not the right one. Uh, 4.4A2, four which is Children's Services. There's a component in that section related to children's services. There's a component in this related to children's services. Closing the vote, the motion carries 13 to 1 with one recuse. Uh, sorry, uh, since the clerk had raised this, uh, um, the uh, component, with, this was the provincial impacts. The provincial impacts did not include uh, my conflict with respect to child reach services. Just wanted to clarify why I voted on this one. Yeah. So noted. Thank you. Okay, next is... 4.4A3, Part B, which is another part that relates to children's services. And this is the uh, provincial impacts for consideration. Councillor Van Holst. Councillor Van Holst. Closing the vote, the motion carries 14 with one recuse. Okay, next I'll ask you to go to section 4.6 under protective services, which is page 15. Uh, what I'd like to do if there's no objections is there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight items related to fire services. Um, there was a conflict uh, declared on fire services. This includes the fire budget as well as all of the uh, capital components as well as all of the forecasts for fire services. Um, it is 4.6 A IV. 4.6 B I B 4.6 B I B uh, uh, sorry two double I B uh, 4.6 B triple I B 4.6 C I B 4.6 C double I B 4.6 C triple I B and again that's basically everything in fire services including the, the operating budget the capital budget and the capital forecasts Comments or questions? Seeing none, I'll turn your attention to the screen. We vote.
Councillor Squire and Councillor Van Holst. Closing the vote and the motion carries 14 with one recuse. Okay, if you turn to page 17 now, under section 4.7, which is social and health services, there are two items uh, under A, uh, VI and VII, that are related to the London or Middlesex London Health Unit. Uh, I'd like to move those two together. Comments or questions? I'll turn your attention to the screen as we vote. Closing the vote and the motion carries 14 with one recuse. I'm just going to say what page to turn to, then I got to ask the clerks a question. Um, you're going to turn to page 30 and 31, which is 4.12. This is the business case section. Sorry, I just wanted to confirm. So in, in this section, we broke out a number of components of the core area action plan, of which there were a couple that had conflicts. So I'm just doing those very specific sections. So under uh, IX, which is business case number 7A, there is a component E, um, which is uh, the investing in Dundas Place uh, initiative. Uh, that was asked to be voted on separately. Thank you. Comments or questions? Seeing none, uh, let's, turn, uh, let's turn to the screen and we'll vote. Councillor Lewis? Uh, just wondering, what was the conflict that this one was pulled out from? I'm sorry, I didn't hear that from our presiding officer. Closing the vote, and the motion carries 12 to 2 with one recuse. In the very same area, uh, under the very same business case, uh, Part G, which is the core area action plan initiative number 29, proactive bylaw enforcement. Comments or questions? I'll turn your attention to the screen as we vote.
closing the vote, the motion carries 13 to one with one recuse. Okay, on the same page, 4.12 uh, XI, which is business case number uh, nine, uh, Fanshawe College Innovation Village. Comments or questions? Councillor Van Mierberg. Oh, all right, thank you. Anyone else? Any other colleagues? Seeing none, we'll turn your attention to the screen. Closing the vote and the motion carries 11 to 3 with one recuse. <clears throat> uh, the next part on the same page, uh, page 31, uh, is XI, or XVIII, which is business case number 15. Both parts A and B are related to uh, subsidized transit program. I'll put those on the floor. Comments or questions? I'll turn your attention to the screen and we'll vote. Closing the vote, the motion carries 14 with one recuse. Okay, the, the next one is on page 42. Uh, it's under the business cases for additional investment section, uh, 4.13. Uh, it is uh, section III, which is the uh, core area action plan parts B, and our, uh, the second basically business case uh, 7B, and the piece that's being pulled out is part C of that, which is initiative 42, core area action plan, operating funding for core area construction dollars pilot program. Comments or questions? Councillor Hopkins, did, I'm sorry, did you have a question? Yeah, if you could repeat that again, thank you. I would be happy to. So on page 41, under the business cases for additional investment, 4.13, uh, business case 7B, uh, which is section 3, uh, part C of that was just initiative 42 in the core area action plan operating side business case, which is related to the construction dollars pilot program. Colleagues, that's on page 42, the second item down, section C there. Comments or questions? Seeing none, I'll turn your attention to the screen as we vote. Closing the vote and the motion carries 13 to 1 with one recuse. Okay, that's it for the, the conflicts. Um, what I'd like to try to do is put everything else on the floor um, that's remaining in the budget, uh, including all components of the meeting. So I'd, I'd be happy to do that. So, so noted. Uh, everything else related to the budget. I apologize, do you want to finish that last comment to cut you off? Yes, everything else related to the budget and the meeting, including the pecuniary interest clauses and all those other pieces of that particular report. 
Thank you very much. Are there any issues, that, uh, any items that colleagues would like to deal with separately? Councillor Kayabaga. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I'd like to pull aside item 8.5, which is number 14, business case number 30. And that was the hotspot Wi-Fi program. We'll just make sure we get those. Could you just uh, reference the page number, Councillor, that we... Councillor Kayabaga, please again. Microphone, please. And it's, un it's under uh, planning and development ser services, I think. Page 30. Page 30. Thank you. Is there a, are you looking for a page reference there? As long as the clerks have the item, I'm okay to put it separately on the floor. I'm just, un I'm unclear on where it is. Business case 30, okay. Those are the business cases for additional reductions, right? Okay. Colleagues, you'll find uh, business case 30 on page uh, 27, two thirds of the way down. Yes, so it's section, so it's 4.11 in the budget document. Part, looks like part three, uh, section V. Uh, this is case 30. Any other items that uh, colleagues would like to have dealt with separately? Councillor Squire. Um, 4.16, which is item 19 on the uh, council agenda. That's the approval of the budget in total. Any other items, colleagues? Back to you, Councillor Morgan. Yes, so uh, at the Councillor's request, uh, I will do the business case number 31st, which is a reduction business case related to London Public Library. I'll put that on the floor. Comments Thanks. or questions? Councillor Krabaga. Uh, thank you. Um, through you, uh, Mr. Mayor, I'd like to um, make another request again uh, with my colleagues that we do not reduce this um, this specific program as um, time has gone by we've done a lot of consultation in the community and a lot of people have spoken on the reasons why we should continue to support this program I've spoken personally to people who use this program and have asked that this program does not get reduced and I know that I had heard from my some of the colleagues who had mentioned um, that they're looking to work with a private sector to continue the program and I would encourage that we do not do this because privatizing any library services goes against the purpose of a, of a public library it goes against the purpose of why um, why we, we we have public services such as the library board uh, such as the library I have spoken again to many people who use the services at the library to many people who work in different parts of the libraries and have spoken on how and why this program shouldn't be reduced. It is a very popular program. As we have read in our business case, different people were mentioned in the business case, mentioning why they care about this program, why they find it important to continue this program, and how they use it in their regular day-to-day -day lives. So with that information, I don't see why we should reduce this program. I encourage uh, my colleagues to support it. We have heard from people who actually use the program, who have this lived experiences, and we should support this program. And reducing it and privatizing it is not the right way to go. If we have a private sector coming in, we should expand the program as it is currently on a high wait list. Um, they don't have enough um, uh, Wi-Fi uh, wi hotspots, and we could, we could look for room to improve the program. It's a very popular program at the library. Uh, as I've spoken to many people who work there, many people who use this program. So I would encourage that we don't, we don't do this. And um, the last thing I wanted to say is that if, if we have done so many other things to support the gaps where the province has fallen short in terms of trying to support our community, and this is another way that we can support our community, there are people who rely on these Wi-Fi hotspots. There are mothers who rely on these hotspots. There are students who rely on them. 
So if we're doing, if we're in the business of helping people and we're in the business of serving our community, I make this plea again once again that we do not reduce this and we do not move to privatize it in any way. If we have private sectors, this is a public library. I think we should expand the program and not reduce in any shape or form. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Lewis. Uh, thank you, Your Worship, and I'm going to uh, rise and encourage colleagues uh, to support this business case reduction. And I, I think it's important we put some uh, myths and misunderstandings about this to rest tonight. Um, first of all, for those in the public who think that somehow the Wi-Fi signal in the library building is being shut off, and I know that, that people have perceived that, that is not the case, nor was that ever the case. Uh, second, the program is not being ended, it's not being reduced. The program is fully funded through the end of 2020. And as was pointed out during our debate on this item, uh, there is an opportunity, should the Library Board fail to secure a sponsorship for this program, to bring back a request in December of this year through the annual budget update process and make a request uh, at that time for the funding. I can tell you that the Library has already been investigating a couple of options that are very promising. Um, but it is not privatizing a, a service to go out and seek a corporate sponsorship or advertisement uh, for city services. Uh, RBC Place uh, paid a lot of money to have naming rights uh, for the convention center. Uh, Budweiser Gardens, obviously, uh, Labatt's has paid a lot of money for naming rights on that building. Uh, we use this method of revenue generation in multiple ways, in multiple venues across the city. Uh, and that includes, actually, uh, the library, which has the Wolf Performance Hall, the Stevenson and Hunt Room, uh, which I know uh, the mayor is familiar with the sponsorship advertising uh, opportunity that went with the naming of that room. Uh, this is something that happens regularly across the municipal sector because we don't have the choice like the province does to run a deficit. We don't have the choice to impose income-based taxation so that those who can afford it uh, can pay more because, in fact, property taxes are not based on something that the individual in a home can control. They're based on an impact assessment and then the share of the municipal spending that has to then be allocated to the services that we provide as a municipality. So they're actually the most regressive form of taxation. So it is very difficult to fill in when the province vacates a space because their taxes are based on income. Ours are not. Ours are based on an equity in an asset, which is not liquid uh, for the vast majority of the individuals who are out there. Uh, it may become liquid in their future when they sell or downsize their home, but it's not liquid today. The library board brought forward this business case with a plan. They've been working on executing that plan. The service is not being reduced. The service is not in jeopardy at all this year. And if the library board needs to, it can come back in the annual budget update. So I respectfully uh, request that we continue on the direction we've, sat, uh, we've set here through committee, uh, that we accept this business case uh, and let the library move forward in doing the work that it needs to do to secure the appropriate dollars, which might be through Friends of the Library's fundraising efforts. It may not even be a corporate sponsorship. Uh, they're a not-for-profit that's certainly not privatizing uh, any more than it is to use the Museum Foundation or other organizations that support the boards and commissions and the work done by those boards and commissions across this city. So uh, while I respect the fact that uh, others may not share that view, uh, I think that it's important that we uh, stay the course on this one. Uh, and I know that the library uh, board has issued a statement. They're absolutely confident uh, in their ability to continue to deliver this service to the community. Thanks very much. Any other comments? Councillor Turner. Thank you, Your Worship. Just really briefly, the impact to uh, household is uh, less than a quarter like less than 25 cents per year, uh, and uh, does have a significant impact to the community. Uh, in terms of its benefit, um, I would again encourage everybody to support uh, the, the program and the investment in the program and uh, reject the, uh, uh, this business case as accepted for uh, reductions. Uh, all the points are valid, I think, from where everybody's coming from. Uh, however, uh, and this is a, an area and a space where we would move into as a municipality uh, from a program that had been formerly provincially funded 
but I think it's important and I think it's valuable. I think not only in our community, but in other municipalities, we've seen uh, some pretty good benefit coming out of, of similar programs, and I think it's worthy of our support. So I'd uh, uh, ask you to uh, reject the uh, business case for reduction. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? Councillor Salee. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So I, I don't support the business case reduction. I think, uh, you know, you heard the comments before. I heard it at last, uh, over the past few weeks. I think uh, I can appreciate this as an opportunity to work with a corporate sponsorship, and, and I don't necessarily have an issue with that when it comes in certain places and certain times. Um, but, but here particularly, uh, this program is definitely what I feel a, a valuable program. Um, hearing from people in the Beacock Library community where I represent with uh, sharing with Councillor uh, Helmer, a lot of people do benefit from that. And I think, uh, you know, I don't want to create an opportunity where there could be even a potential of a short gap or whether it's a weaker window. I, I don't think the library board would, would allow that. Um, but that being said, I still think that this is something that I just believe uh, principally uh, that we should continue to fund from the tax levy as, as you see me speak um, throughout the budget and as you see me why I vote against uh, Pay per use and things like that of such. So, so I encourage you all to uh, defeat this so we could, that we could fund this. I appreciate that we can find savings in other areas, but I don't think this is the one area that I want to uh, take that from. Thank you, Councillor Cassidy. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And again, not to not to drag this on very longer uh, and very much longer because we did argue about this a lot. But um, we talked a lot about uh, the city should focus on its core areas, and, and libraries are definitely one uh, one of our core service areas. Um, and when it comes to technology and connect connectivity to the internet, uh, that's the new literacy. And, uh, and that's what is required for students to be successful, for people to get jobs uh, and things like that. I have no fear that people that are not definitely in need of this program, I, I have no fear that anybody's going to game this. The wait list is so long. Um, for anybody with, with uh, a middle income, internet is, is, is a fact of life and a given. Almost all of our homes have these services. These are people that cannot afford this kind of service. And, uh, and so I really hope that you will defeat this. It's a, it's a minuscule amount. It doesn't affect in percentage numbers the, the levy at all. And, uh, and I think this is definitely something that we should um, fund and encourage private partnership to come in and actually expand the program. Thank you, Councillor Plosser. Thank you, Your Worship. I wasn't going to rise and speak to this tonight. I felt we'd already discussed it numerous times in numerous ways. Um, just wanted to speak to a couple comments that were made, though. Of It is a library pilot program that came in, and then they expanded. It, even the library hasn't done, to my knowledge, a review of success. Um, one comment was made that this is being used by people who, who can't afford it. There's no means test. Your library card gets you access to their 3D printers, this equipment, whatever you want. That's the beauty of your library card. Um, that I also know that people are using this Wi-Fi hotspot to go to the cottage. You, you book it for what you want. We can't say for sure that it's just being used for only this type of people and this type of need. Um, some residents have wrote me asking if this program is better implemented by other providers in our city who could actually get 100% uh, of this program to who needs it. I think that's an excellent question and something that needs to be raised in different spaces. For me tonight, also serving the library board, I accept their, the staff's recommendation and the board's recommendation of not having city council fund this, allowing them to have that space to develop a sponsorship program, which very well could bring in more money to expand it or have them revisit what this program actually looks like in the community for who needs it. So I'll be supporting and accepting the board and the staff's recommendation of letting them do their business and look into sponsorship, knowing full well that they are aware, as council had already told them, when they come back with their request at the end of the year, if something happens and they don't get it, that by all means, we will cover it and please let us know. So with that, I would like them to be able to do their work and develop a sponsorship policy. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? Councilor Morgan. I'm sure, yeah, I, I wanted to make some comments on this one. I, I had the chair last time, so I didn't really get to, to weigh in on it. Um, since uh, this came up, I, I had a chance to speak to the library board members, uh, a couple of them and the library board chair. Um, I, for, for me, and I speak only for myself, uh, the decision 
for, on this one is uh, there's zero risk for the program being canceled this year. I'm happy to give the library board the opportunity to go out and seek, you know, a sponsorship program because that's what they'd like to do. You heard Councillor Ploza who sits on the board and Councillor Lewis who sits on the board to go, they want to go out and investigate that. That's fine with me. I'm also very supportive of if that, that's not successful in the annual update, uh, which will happen and conclude by December of this year because we pass them before the fiscal year starts. I'll be the first one to, to support municip the municipality stepping in with the tax base on this particular program. But for now, I think we have an opportunity to let the library board try something, and I'm inclined to let them try that. Um, but I'll certainly back the program at the appropriate time uh, with municipal tax dollars, uh, should that be necessary. Um, and uh, I think that there is time to allow that to happen. And so I'm supportive of the program, uh, but I'm also supportive of the library board's approach to this. Any other comments or questions? So what I'd like to ask uh, our chair of the bu our budget chair is uh, just to confirm because this is a little bit different. This is uh, this uh, what was supported was a business case reduction. So we just uh, clarify so there's no confusion. What voting yes and what in voting no on this means, please. Yes. So this was a reduction business case. So uh, voting yes is voting for the reduction business case. Um, voting no would be defeating that, um, thus adding that back into the library's base budget request, which they originally submitted. Thanks very much. I will turn your attention to the screen as we vote. Closing the vote and the motion passes nine to six. Thank you, um, Councilor Morgan. So, Councilor Squire has requested um, 4.16 to be voted on separately, which is the basically the adoption of the budget. Uh, I think, from an order of operations standpoint, it would be more prudent to do all the other components of the budget first, because we certainly wouldn't want to pass that and then someone votes against something and changes it because the numbers then wouldn't be right. So um, what I'd like to do is put all of the components of the budget that aren't 4.16 on the floor uh, and then 4.16, which is basically the authorizations of the total amounts as well as the direction to go out and prepare the tax levy bylaw uh, for our staff. I'll do that after um, so the Councillor Squire can have that pulled separately. So I'll just give the folks a moment to, yeah. they might have to pull yeah. those components of the budget together. For yeah, just uh, bear with us a moment, colleagues. So we'll get to that part, right? Uh, Councillor uh, Morgan. I just want to clarify that what the clerks are going to put on the floor is the balance of the report. Everything, including all the other components of the SPPC report, except for 4.16. Comments or questions? Councillor Turner. Uh, thank you, Worship. Uh, just with respect to the core area action plan, uh, just an inquiry. Um, and this might be through you to staff, uh, specifically with respect to stabilization spaces. Uh, I I'm just want to, uh, we're going to pass the global budget here. Uh, I'd like to just be assured that uh, there is another check-in uh, with council that uh, that action before moving forward comes back through the appropriate committee. Uh, as, as it stands right now, there was a recent meeting uh, with respect to the Sylvan Street stabilization space. Uh, there weren't a lot of details uh, at that point about the operation model the, uh, and uh, things for the community. Uh, I think it's important that we see what the business plan is uh, prior to that moving forward. So if I might, through you. Ms. Dieter Spear. Uh, through the chair, thank you for the question. Yes, I think it's important for us to share back with council and with the community about the mechanisms by which we would implement the, the stabilization space, and there will be a report back to council. Thank you. Thank you very council. much. Great. Any other comments or questions? Seeing none, I will turn your attention to the screen as we vote.
Closing the vote and the motion carries 13 to two. Councilor Morgan. Yeah, so what remains is 4.16, which is uh, basically the authorizations of the full amounts for the uh, operating and capital budget and direction to civic administration to bring forward the necessary uh, uh, bylaws to implement the um, budget and the tax rate. Uh, so I'll put that on the floor. Thanks very much. Comments or questions? Councillor Turner. Uh, just really quickly, we went through a fairly arduous process to get here. Uh, I uh, thank all my colleagues for all the contributions they made through the debate. I think it's important that uh, that where we landed uh, was uh, a series of uh, votes in favour and votes against uh, in various combinations across this horseshoe. Uh, and so I, I would encourage everybody to vote uh, for this motion. Uh, I think it uh, is reflective of the debate and, uh, and this deliberation that we put through uh, well over 40 hours of work into uh, it uh, recognized that it, it's not where everybody wanted to land but it is the product of uh, a fairly significant debate to get here so uh, I, I certainly encourage uh, supporting the budget and recognizing what what we did to get here Mr. Mayor thanks very much uh uh, Councillor, uh, colleagues, we have been through a fairly uh, involved process uh, over this last number of weeks, 50 hours uh, of, of our time. Let's not ignore the 1,017 hours and 10 minutes of uh, Councillor Morgan's time. And of all the time that our staff uh, have put together in this, uh, I say this, I'll be supporting this budget because while from my perspective uh, there were parts of it I wished I had uh, been able to tweak uh, more to my own thought process. Uh, I was pretty delighted on behalf of Londoners uh, to do this. Uh, and what are we doing this for? We're doing this for, uh, for our most vulnerable. We're doing this for people who are looking for jobs and opportunities, transportation to get them there. Uh, we're talking about adults. We're talking about kids, those in greatest need. And I think this council can hold its head up high. A huge shout out to staff who have just done a phenomenal job. Ms. Barbone, you and your folks deserve uh, all our appreciation for what you've done. Regardless of the outcome of this vote, uh, I will tell you, uh, incredible uh, efforts that you have made and your staff have made. And this has been a really whole of, of, uh, of uh, administration and staff uh, support to get this done. We're very proud of what you've done. On, and I think it would be inappropriate not to acknowledge the kind of effort that you and your folks have put in. And uh, um, when you started to call uh, Councilor Morgan cousin, I got a little nervous because that just meant he was hanging around an awful lot and, uh, and he had to put the kind of work in that was necessary as well. So for everyone that put the, their, the heart and soul in as he did for this budget, I just want to extend my sincere thanks and appreciation. Any other comments from colleagues? Councillor Salee. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I'll be brief. Um, I'm glad we were able to get to this point. I know it was a long ordeal, um, but it was important work that needed to be done. I want to echo the fact that, you know, thank staff um, and as well thank uh, Councillor Morgan. Uh, this is his second multi-year budget, so uh, it's a lot of work just chairing any regular meeting, so this is quite a lot of work and I'm sure his neck got a lot of exercise looking left and right so thanks to him um, I will say that I'm glad uh, council was uh, able to in some places to uh, step up and fill the gap that was uh, made by others um, and continue to try to find innovative ways um, and look forward as we're with the annual updates to see what we can do to continue to make life affordable and manageable for Londoners but at the same time recognize that these are important services and essential services and that we need to do what we need to do and I recognize that in particular in the policing budget in some of those areas uh, the formulas uh, need to be addressed and, and that's provincial responsibility hopefully we'll continue to advocate and I'm sure my colleague uh, Councillor Hawkins on uh, AMO will continue to do the work on the provincial front and f for some of the areas where the federal government touches on I'm sure Councillor Morgan will continue to do what he can on FCM so thanks thank you Councillor Squire thank you very much Mr. Chair um, budgets are difficult this one I have to say was the easiest of all the budgets um, that we've done so far and, and that's because of the clarity that was provided by staff 
I thought the presentations by staff were very clear. I thought the instructions from staff, which I tried to follow, were very clear. And that guided me through where I've arrived at today. And unfortunately, that means I can't support the budget. Um, let me just start from the starting point, which is what guides me is what I think is reasonable tax rate for the citizens of the City of London, the people that I represent, the people that are trying to find homes, apartments, uh, affordable housing. And unfortunately, I can't say that this is a budget that furthers those particular areas. And when I look at the increases we're going to see in multi-residential, particularly new, new multi-residential and uh, commercial, which are even higher than the average of 3.9%, that doesn't make up for me for the lower rate we have with residential. And I hope we don't get into a situation where we continue to say, well, this rate's lower, so that's good, and this rate's higher, uh, that's the way it goes. It's really important to me for us to be consistent. And, and when we started, the treasurer in her opening remarks said that we should not be moving into areas that are otherwise provincial jurisdiction. And I held that, and that's what I did throughout the process. I did not eliminate or cut, and in fact, I, I provided more funding in the areas that the city's responsible for, transit, housing. I supported the climate emergency funding. Um, all of these things I supported. But where I drew my line was going and moving into areas that are provincial jurisdiction. I think that's a dangerous thing to do, to say that because we want to do good, because we want to do that, we're going to move into areas that we are not responsible for. Because to me, that only makes it more difficult in the future for us to cover off and deal with the areas that are our jurisdiction. So um, I have no uh, malice or bad feelings about the budget process. I think it was a fantastic process, and I accept the decisions that are different than mine that my colleagues have made. That being said, I have to be true to the principles that guide me in a budget process, and that involves making decisions that I think are in line with our budget policy and the goals of, of what I think are my constituents within the City of London. So that being said, I will not be supporting the budget, but I will continue to do the best I can to support all of the things in the City of London that have been funded. Because after the budget is done, whether I voted for it or didn't vote for it, it is our budget. And I have an absolute responsibility to make sure that those dollars allocated to the budget go where they are most needed. Downloading is a term people seem to use all the time now. Downloading for me means we are obligated to fund it. There were two areas that were, to me, true downloading. Uh, one was argued in the area of the conservation authorities. I listened very carefully to our legal counsel who said, well, no, you could challenge. You know, there's a process by which you could challenge that. I was prepared to do that. On the area of the land ambulance, I, I accepted that that was a true download and funded it. But all the other areas were choice. They were choices that we had to make, um, and I made those choices, and I, and I don't regret making them. So um, I want to thank staff again. I want to thank all of my colleagues, and um, we will move forward. Um, we will do the best we can, but I, I do worry about the, the tax rates that we have set. Councillor Lehman. <clears throat> thank you, Your Worship. I just want to talk a bit about uh, the process, and uh, we in this room know the process, but this is more for people at home. After we were first elected, staff interviewed us, each of us, in depth to find out what we had heard while speaking out on the, uh, knocking on doors. I mean, between all of us, we probably knocked on every single door in London. People wonder where, where these initiatives come from. They're not randomly picked. These initiatives were set up from those meetings that we all, all had. And Lunders spoke with a clear voice. Lunders said, um, what's happening right now in our streets is not acceptable. And you've got to do something about it. And when you come into here, you find out that the solutions are hard. It's a complex issue. And I think there's a lot of, many cities across North America are facing the same issues that London face. And I think some cities do not act because of the complexity of the situation. So I'm so proud of London right now. Because London spoke and they said, you know what? This is not acceptable for our city and we got to act. I understand, uh, you know, tax concerns are there. But from what I heard from my constituents and I, I, where we're at and how this passed so easily with over 50 million going to housing and homelessness and social services, it was London speaking. So we did the easy part. 
We talked about it for a long time, and we passed this. London's doing the hard, hard part because they're paying for it. And the other people are going to do the hard part is our staff now. We're giving them a considerable amount of money and a huge problem to deal with. But I think all of us have the utmost trust in the capabilities of our staff, or else we wouldn't have granted them the financial tools to truly make an impact in our city. So from council, on behalf of myself, and I'm sure others feel this way, thank you to London. Because um, I think for four years, you're going to see a return on, on that investment. And um, it makes me proud to be a Londoner today. Thank you. Councillor Lewis. Thank you, Your Worship. And Councillor Lehman has just really eloquently articulated the reality of this budget process and what it means for Londoners. And when I go on Thursday to sit down with some folks from my community association and, and talk about some things in the ward uh, over coffee, I will still struggle to talk to a couple of the retirees who are not going to get 2.6 or 3% on their CPP and OAS this year. But what I will be able to tell them is that we came to a consensus as a group. There are things in this budget I would have chosen not to fund, but as a group we chose to fund. There are things in this budget that I wanted funded that others did not, uh, that we did fund. That's the democratic process, that's the way it works. And I, I can certainly look at them confidently and say, I believe we've done our best job to deliver a fair budget that is going to make a significant dent in affordable housing and homelessness. And, and like Councillor Lehman, I have nothing but the utmost confidence in Ms. Datersbeer and her team to make a big impact there. And we're going to make an impact on transit service in this community. Uh, we have given the LTC a significant uh, increase in their operating budget, and we've kept the subsidized transit passes in place. That's going to be an improvement for us. We've committed to do better in clearing the snow from sidewalks. And it's not going to be down to the bare pavement yet, but we're going to make an effort to do better than we've been doing. And we're going to let them put their organic food waste into green bins and preserve the life of our landfill and make a contribution to the environment that way, along with other things that we'll be doing on the environmental front because we've adopted a climate emergency action plan that we will start applying to our decision making here. So I think that although I would have liked to have seen the tax levy impact a little bit lower, I can at least look those constituents in the face and say, you're going to see an improved London as a result of this. And I truly believe, uh, and I will just echo what Councillor Lehman said, I have nothing but the utmost confidence in the people on that side of the horseshoe to take the responsibility that we're giving them with this budget approval and make a difference in making our city a better place. And I would be remiss, of course, if I didn't thank Ms. Barbone and her team, but I'd be particularly remiss if I did not also thank Councillor Morgan, because I know that he took hours and hours and hours away from Ainsley and McKenna and Max and Melanie to meet with staff, to meet with his fellow councillors and, and talk through different components of the budget with us, uh, to be at town hall meetings, uh, to talk to our uh, media representatives and explain some of the nuances in the budget process to them as well. Uh, so I want to just finish by saying thank you, Councillor Morgan, for leading this city through its second and your second uh, multi-year budget process. Uh, of course, with annual updates to come and tax ratios and all of those things, the budget work isn't done. Uh, so uh, we expect you to stay nearby for all of the rest of our questions. To keep explaining them, yes, thank you. Uh, thank you. Any other comments or questions? Uh, Councillor Van Meerbergen. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, the bottom line, quite simply, uh, is that this is just far too high. Uh, it's, it's far too high of a budget. It's far too much for the people that have to pay the bill. Uh, when you look at a 4.4% hike in the first year and basically 4% every year after that, with compounding in four years, you're basically looking at around 18% in terms of a hike. So clearly this is eating into disposable income uh, it's already been pointed out that the property tax is the most unfair of taxes, the most um, 
or the worst tax, to try and fund a lot of this spending. And, and, and we have to be frank, we can't solve this, all these problems on our own as a city, and we certainly can't solve them overnight or even over the next four years. So I think we just have to be cognizant of the very fact that we are connected to the people that put us here. And it was loud and clear, certainly at the doors I went to, keep that tax rate at inflation or below. And this is galloping at more than twice the rate of inflation. It's far too high, in my view, unfair, and I will not be supporting it. Thank you, uh, Councilor Hopkins. Yeah, thank you, Your Worship, for recognizing me. I didn't pull out my hand, but I will take on this op opportunity. Um, following I saw my... Councillor Van Mierberg and saw double, I guess. <laughs> Sorry. Following my uh, colleague to the left here, definitely I'd like to take this opportunity. Well, no. <laughs> yes, to the left. Not <laughs> so. I do agree with my colleague to the left that we cannot solve our problems overnight. I agree totally, but this is a start. We have problems. I think it was acknowledged. Uh, Councillor Lehman said it well. We heard from the community. We had two public participation meetings through this budget process, and I tell you, these uh, public participation meetings to me, uh, when I heard the uh, people from the community come and speak and refer, they did their uh, homework, they referred to clauses, I heard loud and clear, housing, climate change, those are the things that matter to Londoners, and we have to start somewhere. Um, we are starting now, and I know we're going to give staff a big task to move forward with all the uh, challenges that lay ahead. But this is the beginning of the four-year uh, budget. We know that we're going to have opportunities throughout the next four years to revisit this budget see where we are and uh, adjust accordingly. So I am uh, pleased, uh, like um, uh, Councillor Lehman, to be a proud Londoner and doing what's best for the city. Uh, I think it's really important that uh, we start somewhere housing uh, the environment. And of course, introducing the green bins, I think, is something that we can all be proud of. So thank you to my colleagues and also thank you to staff and the public for coming out as well. Thank you. Uh, I hate to say to my far right, but Councillor Van Hulls, please go ahead. Uh, thank you very much. So I, I didn't support the budget in the last, the last vote, and I won't be, but I want to describe uh, why with perhaps just a little metaphor. If you imagine if, if we were to go to Vegas and I were to ask you, uh, how is it that all of these casinos are so opulent and, and rich? You might say, well, Michael, the, every, the odds for every game are in favor of the house. They win by design. And, and then I might ask, well, you know, Canadians, are, are, are we winning by design? And uh, I think the answer may be no. Uh, certainly, one of the things that we need to do is drive down the cost of living, because that's, that's something that would make everybody win, and taxes are a part of that cost of living. And I see here they've gone up by amount that's greater than, than I'm comfortable with. Now, that said... A lot of the things we did, I liked. Some things we didn't. I, I, this, remind, this process reminds me of uh, the end of a term where I've got to tally up everybody's marks and, and decide whether it's a, it's, a, it's a pass or not a pass. And they may have done some great work, but uh, in this case, it wasn't, wasn't enough for me to provide a pass. And so that's the reason for my vote. But uh, nevertheless, uh, I enjoyed the term with you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Deputy Mayor Helmer. Um, I just wanted to hear what uh, other folks are going to say so I could knock some things off my list. Uh, and that, that's been helpful. It's a lot, a lot less for me to cover. I want to I say a couple of things. One is, um, unfortunately, the pressures that are going to come from external forces uh, are not over. You know, this year we're dealing with a 10% increase in the health unit, for example. 
Uh, based on what I've been hearing, I think that pressure is going to continue uh, in next year, the year after that, perhaps. Um, we're going to have pressure coming up on some of these things uh, as other uh, groups make, make decisions. Um, and so, you know, this is not the end of the process, as we all know, uh, and I think there's going to be some negative surprises um, in the updates. It's not all going to be positive, and I think it's going to be uh, difficult. We're going to need to come through on the service reviews across all kinds of different areas, right? We didn't, unlike last time, we didn't bake in some amount that we were going to save, uh, but we need to find uh, some savings as we go through the multi-year budget. Um, I think in the areas where we have put in uh, above inflation increases, a couple of them that I think are really important, uh, they've been covered a bit already, um, the conventional transit, even before we have assessment growth, we're putting in 4.3% on average uh, increase. Specialized transit, 13.5% on average uh, increase into specialized transit. I think that's really important. Um, you know, that's an area where we saw significant cost increases coming uh, through the contract. And just to keep the, the quality of service as it is requires pretty significant increases. Um, I also think on the positive side, we've got a couple of areas that are pretty big components of the budget where we have sub-3% increases. So fire service is around 29 I think that's going in the right direction. I think that's getting to a more sustainable path. And police service is 2.5. The police service is a big chunk of the budget just on its own. And to come in at 2.5, uh, I think, is, is good. Um, I think in terms of other areas where we're seeing a lot of extra increase, um, community housing. The base budget is going up 5.3%, <clears throat> plus we have the additional business cases on top of that, plus we have the regeneration, of the increases in staffing that are coming through the one business case. It's a very significant budget for community housing, and much more so than what we did in the last multi-year budget, and I think that that's the right priority. You know, like We're putting a lot of money into an important thing, uh, and I, hope, I think it's going to result in really significant improvements. Um, I do want to say, though, in terms of overall affordability and like why are property taxes going up all the time and why is it so expensive and what can we do to make life more affordable, we have to stop sprawling, right? That is the fundamental problem. If you keep sprawling out in low-density housing, everything is more expensive. You need more roads. You need more sewers. You, need, you have to travel further distances to deliver all the services. You need more people. You have to use more energy. Everything is more expensive as we sprawl. So we have to stop that. And it's not going to provide any relief you know, in the short term. right? That's a long-term thing that will change how expensive it is. But because we sprawled 35 years ago, we have a big budget this year. I think that's how it works. right? We have to make the decision now. It's going to save somebody else in the future because it's going to be cheaper. So I think we have to, when we're dealing with all these things around how we're growing as a city, we have to keep that in mind. It puts huge pressure on the property tax levy to grow that way. And the more inward and upward we can grow, the cheaper it's going to be in the long run for everybody. Thank you. Other comments? Councillor Morgan. Thank you, Chair. Um, first off, uh, I know I've been saying there's been 49 hours of debate. I want to thank colleagues for pushing it over 50. Um, <laughs> sounds, sounds like a nice round number now. Um, uh, the first group I want to thank uh, with the budget process is, uh, is one that was highlighted uh, uh, briefly by a couple of colleagues, and, th and that's the public. Uh, what we had was, was two public, official public participation meetings where the gallery was full and we had multiple overflow rooms. Uh, many ward councillors had uh, one, two, maybe three ward meetings where, uh, where Londoners came out and provided feedback. Uh, we had all of the information that came through our public engagement reports, uh, through all of the mechanisms that our staff had, all of the times that they went out, all of the times that they met with groups, all of the times they engaged, uh, that all feeds into the budget debate process. And I think we had a really healthy and respectful and robust debate uh, because the public engaged in the process in a meaningful way, because they provided really good feedback to councillors on the trade-offs that they wanted to see. And that's why I really respect all of the opinions that, that all of our colleagues express and all of the votes they cast, because I know constituents were very active on this, and I respect that we may not have all been hearing the same things, because we all have different constituents in different parts of the city with different needs. And so uh, I want to first and foremost thank the public for their engagement in the budget process and encourage them to stay engaged with their councillors through the implementation of the budget process and the annual budget updates. Uh, we certainly have the ability to make course corrections uh, through the four years. Uh, we certainly have a, a, a huge challenge ahead of us in the implementation of the budget, uh, which is closely aligned with our strategic plan, another document that Londoners gave us extensive feedback on. Um, but that's a really important component. 
Uh, obviously, I want to thank our staff, who I got to work um, closely with over the last little while. They're really smart, and, uh, and they make us look really good, uh, like a lot of the time. We threw a lot of stuff at them during the budget process. There were a lot of numbers and changes that were they did not know were coming. Sometimes we need a little pause, but they were really professional, and they got all the information we needed. I don't think anybody around this horseshoe can say staff weren't able to give us the information we needed to make the decisions we had to make in the budget. And that's really the key to their job. We have to make the decisions. They support us on it. I think they did a really good job in supporting the decision making uh, that council was able to do on this particular budget. Uh, on the budget process, um, uh, I, I'm of the same mind of a number of colleagues on this. I think we made really key investments given a very challenging hand that was dealt to us. Um, we had downloading, we had emergency services pressures, we have cost pressures of our own as a municipality. Um, we also have a strategic plan that lenders expect us to implement, and that requires significant investment. We have what we keep calling a crisis, and we had to put money behind doing something about that crisis in our housing and homelessness space. So we made over $63 million of funding uh, for how, uh, homelessness and prevention and housing initiatives. We invested millions in waste diversion and climate actions. Uh, we invested millions in transportation uh, and transit uh, and millions into the core area action plan to address issues of the core. Uh, these are investments that we had to make. We had to make if we were going to try to achieve some of our strategic plan over the course of this term of council, and I'm proud that we made them. Now, that being said, the tax rate is something that I know we're all sensitive to as well, and it's difficult to do all of those things without putting some pressure on taxes. Municipalities are dealt a really crappy hand when it comes to taxes and that we have basically the property tax to work with and we can't really run uh, operating deficits and so we have to basically get the money from somewhere and there's only one place to get it from to do all the things we need to do. So that's a challenge. But I've heard colleagues say that their constituents are at the margins on this, that there are people who will struggle to make ends meet uh, and that every little dollar, whether it's hydro or energy or sales taxes or property taxes, really pushes them to the brink, and, and we need to be thoughtful and respectful of that. Um, I will say on the budget numbers and the tax rate, uh, and I've said this a few times, uh, the budget is the first step in setting the tax rate. And uh, Councillor Squire is exactly right. That tax rate will be distributed differently among the different tax classes. And that is mainly due to the way that properties have appreciated across the city in an unequal way. Commercial properties, for example, appreciate have appreciated very quickly relative to other classes, and they will shoulder a larger proportion of the tax share. Residential properties will actually receive a benefit from that distribution. And the education tax will benefit all the classes in some way because other parts of the province will pay a larger share of the education tax because of the way that properties are appreciating across the province. Uh, what we can do to help that is we can use our tax ratios to smooth some of that. And we are going to potentially do what we've done as a council previously, and that's contract the ratio between commercial and, and residential. And that will provide a little bit of relief to, uh, to businesses in the city. Uh, but there's only so much we can do given the way that the properties have appreciated and the way that the tax system, quite frankly, works in the city. The other thing we can do is to continue to advocate for what I spoke about earlier in this meeting, and that's the continued uploading of the education tax off the back of corporations in the city, a program that already exists, was paused, and can be resumed by the province, which will provide some continued tax relief and resolve an inequity in the way that that is distributed across the province uh, uh, at this point. So there are many discussions to come in uh, the way that Londoners are able to pay for the tax rate and afford the tax rate and the way that it's distributed. And those are important discussions and this is really just the first step in the process. But I do wanna appreciate colleagues for giving me the opportunity to chair the budget process. Um, I actually really enjoyed it, um, which may sound odd, but um, I, I enjoy the, the, the process of, of listening to the debate, listening to your thoughtful dialogue, um, you know, getting to, getting to be involved at a very deep level with our staff who are, as I said, we're very professional and I really enjoyed it and I appreciate the opportunity to do that. And um, uh, like, I really appreciate the opportunity to do that. It was a council decision. Um, you let me have this opportunity and I really thank you for it. I think I learned a lot from the experience and that I'll carry that learning forward and all the other things I do. So, uh, so thanks to council for the opportunity. I'll be supporting the budget as it stands. I didn't vote for everything. Uh, not everything I wanted was in there, but I appreciate process that we went through and I'm going to support the overall results of that process so thank you. Thank you uh, Councillor Morgan. Uh, colleagues um, we're going to vote uh, right now on the budget uh, and irrespective of your position on it uh, and we've certainly heard uh, from uh, many of you with respect to it 
I think what's been very clear is from all of your comments is that we have a number of people that we've acknowledged. Uh, absolutely, Councillor Morgan, absolutely, Ms. Barbone and her fin finance staff, our, cl our, our clerks, our senior leadership team, our amazing staff, all of you who took a whole of government approach. And I would like Council to uh, join me in thanking Councillor Morgan and that amazing team that we have for the great work they've done. Thank you very much. I think I just saw Councillor Morgan clap for himself, but I wasn't sure. Uh, <laughs> My claps are all for Ms. Barbone. I'm not sure how many standing ovations we get in here, but I have to tell you, it's very nice. Colleagues, I'll turn your attention to the screen as we vote. Closing the vote and the motion passes 12 to 3. Thank you, colleagues, and again for all of your work. Uh, it has truly mattered. Colleagues, uh, we now have the, and thank you, Councilor Morgan, you're sitting now, that's great. We now have the fifth report of Council in closed session. I'd like to call on Councilor Hopkins to present the report, please. Yes, Your Worship, happy to present the fifth report of the Council in closed session. I would like to report progress on all items 1A to H for uh, items that we went in camera for. Thanks. I'll look for a second. Councillor Van Hulst, thank you very much. We'll call the vote. Closing the vote, and the motion carries 15 to 0. Colleagues, I am not aware of any deferred matters, nor inquiries, nor emergent motions, which moves us now into the bylaws section. And, uh, colleagues, we're going to deal with the budget item separately. So uh, I'll turn your attention to bylaws 92 through 107. And I'll look for a mover and seconder for introduction and first reading of bills 92 through 107. Uh, moved by Councillor Lewis, seconded by Councillor Van Merberg, and I'll call the vote. Sorry, Councillor Slee. I just have a conflict on 100. Bill 100. Separate. separate, yeah, because I have a conflict. Excuse me. Um, then we will uh, deal with uh, Bill 100 separately due to a conflict. So we're talking about Bills 92 through 99, 101 through 107.
Closing the vote, the motion carries 15 to 0. Colleagues, I'll look for a mover and seconder and second reading of bills 92 through 99, 101 through 107. Is there a mover, Councillor Lehman, seconded by Councillor Hillier? Any discussion? Then I'll turn your attention to the screen as we vote. Closing the vote, the motion carries 15 to 0. Thanks very much. Now I look for mover and second of third reading and enactment of bills 92 through 99, 101 through 107. Is there a mover? Councillor Turner seconded by Councillor Lewis. Thank you very much. I'll call the vote. Closing the vote, the motion carries 15 to 0. Colleagues, we'll turn our attention to uh, Bill 100, and I'll look for a mover and seconder for introduction and first reading. Councillor Hopkins, seconded by Councillor Hillier. I'll call the vote. Closing the vote, and the motion carries 14 with one recuse. Thank you. I will look for a mover and second for second reading of Bill 100. Moved by. Deputy Mayor Helmer, seconded by. Councillor Hopkins, any discussion? Seeing none, I'll call the vote. Closing the vote, and the motion carries 14 with one recuse. Colleagues, now we'll look for a uh, mover and seconder for third reading enactment of bill number 100, moved by Councillor Turner, seconded by Councillor Hillier. I will call the vote. Closing the vote, and the motion carries 14 with one recuse. Colleagues, I'll now turn your attention to uh, Bill 108, the budget. I'll look for a mover and seconder for introduction first reading. Deputy Mayor, oh, sorry, Councillor Morgan, seconded by Deputy Mayor Helmer. I'll call the vote. Van Holst.
Councillor Van Holst. Closing the vote and the motion carries 12 to three. I will look for a mover and seconder for second review bill 108, Councillor Morgan, seconded by Councillor Lewis. Any discussion? Councillor Van Holst. Thank you very much. So uh, previously I said the reason I voted for this was because of its impact on uh, people with low incomes. And uh, I would also, I would like to point out that there is uh, a, uh, an Ontario electricity um, support program that uh, people can take advantage of. So if, if you're a person who finds uh, <clears throat> the impact of these taxes challenging but haven't taken advantage of that program, uh, I suggest you do because the, the uptake was low, but it can be a, a, a big assistance. So uh, that's just another point I had to offer. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any other comments? Seeing none, I will turn your attention to the screen as we vote. Closing the vote and the motion carries 12 to 3. Thank you. Now I will look for a mover and seconder of third reading and enactment of Bill number 108. Councillor Morgan, seconded by Councillor Lehman. I'll call the vote. Closing the vote, and the motion carries 12 to 3. Thanks very much. Colleagues, we have two added bills, numbers 109 and 110. Um, I'd like to make a suggestion, colleagues, around the table. We're going to deal with bill number 109 first. You've got that information of the bylaw in front of you. And what I would like to do is I would like to uh, suggest to colleagues that we, uh, uh, unless there's a compelling uh, wish to discuss on second reading, Let's move to third reading, and then if people have comments afterwards, if they would choose to make them, uh, because we can't, it's, it's uh, because it's somewhat difficult to uh, talk to the, the issue uh, during the fact when it's not, in fact, bylaw, depending on what it is that one might like to say. If that isn't too confusing, then I'll look for a mover and second or introduction of first reading of Bill 109. Councillor uh, Pelosa, seconded by Councillor Hopkins. I'll call the vote. Closing the vote and the motion carries 15 to 0. I'll look for a mover and seconder of Bill uh, 109. Councillor Sully, seconded by Councillor Lewis. Any discussion? Then I'll call the vote. Closing the vote, and the motion carries 15 to 0. I'll look for a mover and seconder of third reading enactment of Bill uh, 109. Deputy Mayor Helmer, seconded by Councillor Turner. I'll call the vote. Oh, excuse me. I thought you were moving that. I apologize. Deputy I, Mayor. I am moving it. I'm just wondering if you could tell people what it is. Because unless you have it in front of you, you don't know what it is we're voting on. I think all colleagues have that in front of them, do they not? I do think we all know. So I'm not, I'm not sure everybody else knows. Which like the people who are following the live stream, you know, people who are in the gallery, I just don't think they know what we're which is Which is why, and I wasn't trying to be cryptic, which is why I thought it would be appropriate after this, after the bill was enacted that we, that we speak to it. I know it sounds a little 
convoluted and if I've confused, I didn't mean to, but I thought it might be more appropriate to make that more as an announcement than as a debate. Because it's hard to declare something that isn't a bylaw yet. That was the intent. So we'll still, still speak to it right after, which is a little convoluted, I get it, but uh, it was done with sincere intent. Pardon me? Why, uh, yes, go ahead, uh, Councilor Morgan, please. You don't want to do that? No, we're not done yet, please. Uh, I think it's a fair point. I was trying to do something a little different, but um, rules are rules, and I respect the rules. And uh, so uh, if you would read out the, uh, the announcement, clerk. The bylaw. Through you, Mr. Mayor, Bill 109 is a, a bylaw to appoint Lynn Livingston as city manager, whereas Section 5.3 of the Municipal Act 2001, as amended, provides that a municipal power shall be exercised by bylaw and where Section 229 of the Municipal Act provides that a municipality may appoint a chief administrative officer who shall be responsible for a exercising general control and management of the affairs of the municipality for the purpose of ensuring efficient and effective operations of the municipality and b performing such other duties as assigned by the municipality and whereas, this, whereas it is deemed appropriate by municipal councils who appoint a city manager now, therefore, the Municipal Council of the Corporation of the City of London enacts as follows. One, Lynn Livingston is hereby appointed as City Manager. Two, this bylaw comes into effect on the day it is passed. Thank you very much. We've had first and second reading. I will look for a mover and second or third reading. And, uh, I wanted to reconfirm that uh, that through because of what might have been a question versus moving it. Deputy Mayor, you're comfortable moving it. Councilor Attorney, you're comfortable seconding that. Thank you very much. I'll call the vote. Closing the vote. The motion carries 15 to zero. I have the mayor on the list as a speaker. Thanks very much. Uh, the process may have been a little convoluted, and I apologize for the confusion because certainly it, uh, it would have been appropriate to have discussion. Uh, but I was assured by people smarter than me that uh, we needed this to be a bylaw before we could uh, offer congratulations to uh, our new city manager. Uh, and I'm absolutely delighted that, uh, as we've confirmed, uh, the passing of this bylaw that uh, Lynn Livingston has been appointed as our city manager. Look, Lynn is known to all of us for the leadership she's provided to neighborhood children and fire services, for the leadership she's brought to the role as deputy city manager in the past few months, for the leadership she has brought to the entire organization following Martin Hayward's retirement. We launched the process to identify the new city manager when Martin announced his retirement uh, late last year. With the help of a national recruiting firm, that search was extensive. And we went through the process, and as we did so, it became clear to me and to counsel that Ms. Livingston was the right person for this role. Let me tell you why. Lynn has dedicated her 30-year career to serving the public, first with the province and then with the City of London. She is a leader who has earned a rep reputation for being collaborative, engaged, and caring, a leader who encourages not only action but excellence. She has a track record of working effectively across all three levels of government and the ability to establish excellent community partnerships. In recent years, Lynn has been at the helm of the strategic plan, leading the development 
of it and driving its execution. And collectively, Council believes that ULIN have the values, passion, skills, and commitment to move our city forward. I'm very proud to congratulate you on your appointment and on behalf of all the Council to extend our best wishes as you take on your new responsibilities. Congratulations from all of us. If anyone wishes to make a comment, uh, we'd, uh, that would be fine. But thank you for indulging me with the, uh, we have one other piece of business with respect to bylaws, but, it, but uh, certainly if anyone else has a comment, I'll be uh, delighted to acknowledge that. Thank you. And I wouldn't put uh, Count, uh, Ms. Livingston on the spot, uh, but certainly uh, if you uh, would like to, to make a comment, you're welcome to. And, uh, and if you don't, then uh, I have put you on the spot. Uh, no. Council Morgan, if you turn that off, please. Uh, well, Your Worship, I'll be brief. At the end of a long uh, meeting, I would just like to uh, thank Council uh, for um, allowing me to participate in that uh, recruitment process, and I appreciate your faith in me as we move forward together. I'm very honoured to take on this role, and I look forward to working with you with uh, an amazing uh, city team and with our community partners uh, to continue to move in the direction we have been moving in together to try and build a better London for everyone. So thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Livingston. And uh, colleagues, uh, before we uh, look for a mover and second for Bill 110, it's probably a good idea that uh, everyone knows what it is that we're voting for. So if I could, could I ask the clerk please to, uh, to share that with us? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Bill number 110 is the bylaw to repeal bylaw number A7538-125 entitled a bylaw to repeal bylaw A7156-76 entitled a bylaw to appoint Martin Hayward as acting city manager and to appoint Martin Hayward as city manager. Whereas section 53 of the municipal act as amended provides that a municipal power shall be exercised by bylaw and whereas section 229 of the municipal act as amended provides that a municipality may appoint a chief administrative officer who shall be responsible for exercising general control and management of affairs in the municipality for the purpose of ensuring efficient and effective operations of the municipality and performing such other duties as assigned by the municipality. And whereas the, Minis the municipal council appointed Martin Hayward as city manager uh, on April 4th, 2017, and whereas Martin Hayward has retired from the position of city manager, now therefore the municipal council of the corporation of the city of London enacts as follows, that bylaw 7538-125 uh, be repealed. Thank you very much. I will ask for a mover and seconder for the introduction and reading of Bill Number One Ten. Uh, Councillor Hillier, seconded by Councillor Van Meerberg, and I'll call the vote. Closing the vote and the motion carries 14 to 1. Colleagues, I'll look for a mover and second or second reading of Bill 110. Uh, moved by Councillor Van Hole, seconded by Councillor Hopkins. Any discussion? Councillor Morgan. Yes, I just want to explain my vote on the last uh, bill. Um, when Mr. Hayward first became city manager, I told him he should stay for a while, and if his bylaw ever came forward to uh, repeal it, I would vote against it. Now, I'm not going to do that for the next two, two votes, but I didn't want to keep my commitment to him uh, because uh, uh, I, I did enjoy, as, as, as was said earlier in the budget process, uh, I did have an opportunity to take on a role in the first multi-year budget uh, as an advisor to the mayor, and that involved me working very closely with Mr. Hayward, which is where I got to know him, and I know many of us got to know him very well. Um, he was a very, he, he is still a very sincere, honest, f very hilarious uh, man who really believes in public service, uh, dedicated his entire 
a career to the City of London. Uh, anybody who attended his retirement party knows how the employees uh, and the community feel about him. And uh, this repealing of his appointment as city manager, although it was just a small part of his career, uh, is, uh, I think, the end uh, to a very distinguished uh, career in public service, uh, the kind that is, uh, I think, enviable by many of his colleagues um, to, to be a part of the many contributions that he was able to, to make. Uh, and uh, the service he gave to the community. Certainly, on behalf of the constituents I represent, uh, and I know uh, many uh, around this table feel the same way, uh, we thank him for his public service uh, as we draw this chapter of his, uh, his career to a, a close. Um, and, uh, and again, I don't know if he'll watch this. He's probably on holidays, because that's where I would be if I were retired. Um, but uh, I hope he does, uh, he does uh, listen to this meeting and, and know that we appreciate uh, everything he's done at this kind of final moment in his career as city manager. Any other comments? Seeing none, I'll, I'll call the vote. Closing the vote, the motion carries 15 to 0. Thank you. And colleagues, finally, I'll look for a mover and second or third reading of an enactment of Bill 110. Councillor Lehman, seconded by Councillor Van Holst. I will call the vote. Closing the vote, the motion carries 15 to 0. Colleagues, it's been a long meeting, an important meeting, but I'd like to thank you all. Let me also say to staff, thank you very much for, uh, for hanging in uh, tonight, uh, but most importantly for the work that you do. We, are, we certainly appreciate it all, and please extend that to our staff. With all of that, I'll look for a motion to adjourn, moved by Councillor Van Meerbergen, seconded by Councillor Van Holst. We'll do a hand vote. All those in favour? That looks uh, mostly unanimous. Media adjourned.